My other co-host, OG Krugster. And today is episode 122 of the OG Podcast. 122. I absolutely have nothing for 122. No, it's okay. You don't have to have something for every uh, number. You know? I know, <laughs> but it became an accidental thing, and now I, I expect myself to have it. And I don't have yeah. it. It's all good, man. <laughs> uh, yeah so uh how's your week been uh, it's been uh, okay i would say that uh i got a little extra time off because the holiday monday they gave us a day off so it's nice to have an extra day to kind of just chill relax and think about work so that's a good thing that's what's up um, and then yesterday i spent pretty much all day watching anime which is something i haven't done in a long time wow and uh, it actually feels nice because uh, I've always been a big fan of anime in general, and I just haven't really been watching it lately. But yeah. on Crunchyroll, they updated uh, what is it called, Fairy Tale, which is one of my favorite animes uh-huh. for the new season. So uh, right now, I was I didn't watch the entire series, but I watched some of it. But then my girlfriend also likes the series, so we went ahead and just started over from the beginning, and we're watching it from the beginning all the way up. So we're kind of binge watching it right now. Oh, that's for cool. This past couple of days. That's that's what's up. Yeah, um, but other than that, uh, you know, also found out that we will be moving for sure this year. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, we got a letter from the office saying that basically once our lease runs out, uh, or they're not gonna let us stay. They want us to go ahead and find somewhere else to go. So uh, that's a little weird. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't say why, and I'm not really going to question it, because honestly, I mean, there's a lot of problems that we have here anyway, and yeah. I think this is like a sign that God is pushing us instead of us having to constantly just wait, uh, so <laughs> we're just going to figure that out when the time comes. Uh, it's not an eviction or anything like that, although we have to leave sooner, but we still have a few more months. I think uh, our lease ends at the end of August, so oh. uh, we should be in a new place by then. That's not that's not that's not very far away. It's not, but you know. What are yeah, you doing? so like what's so, the game uh, plan? Oh, I don't even have a plan. I'm just gonna pray. Oh, that's my plan. Hey, that's uh, that's the best that's the best plan. Uh I mean there's a couple of things that could help because I mean the biggest issue really is the fact that neither me nor my woman can physically do the moving, so we're gonna have to hire movers. So that's gonna be a financial thing. And then of course, you know, pet deposits, all that stuff. It, the, it all adds up. Uh, so it's it's gonna be more an issue of money than anything else, but we'll figure it out. Like I said, we're just gonna pray about it and see what happens. Uh, I do have a bonus that I'm supposed to be getting. I'm not exactly sure when though. I don't know if it's gonna be June, July, August or when, but hopefully, you know, the bonus will help with whatever else comes in between. So we'll see. Um, so, so that that's something that just got sprung on us like a few days ago. That's so, you know, crazy, dude. We're still trying to figure that out, but uh, right now we're just preliminary, just kind of you know casually browsing to see where we're gonna go. We're still gonna stay in the general area that we're in. Uh-huh. We're just not exactly sure where specifically we're gonna so... be, what apartment or a house or whatever. <laughs> Okay, I can give you some advice. If you go to, if you, if you are looking to, if, if you get an apartment, if you, if you decide that the apartment is the best way to go, there's apartment finders, right? Now hear me out, because sometimes apartment finders suck, but sometimes when you, when you uh, get the apart, apartment finder, they throw in a uh, uh, free moving, like they'll move you. Like they, they're, 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 they're partnered with like movers and they'll move you for free. That's what me and my wife do. That's what, how, that's how me and my wife moved into here. Um, we, the apartment founder found this place and they, um, they were partnered with a moving company and they moved us for free. So, oh, okay. So- you just pay a fee to use their services, basically, and everything yeah. in the package. Yeah, pretty much. And it was, yeah. and it was not even like that much of a fee, really, um, because it. Yo yo yo! Thank you for that host. Um, a lot of apartment finders are free because they get they get paid by the apartment complex. So basically, if like if I fill out the application and. Yo, 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 crew dog, thank you for that host, man. Uh, nine times out of ten, if I pay, or if, like, say for instance, like, 
for this place. Like I didn't, I didn't have to pay for the um the finder's fee. Um, all I had to do is put their name on the application of how I found the place, and the apartments paid them. So, yeah, it's cool. it's practically it was nothing. So if 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 that's the route you go, I suggest you look into um into that. Um, it would be cheaper. Okay. It would be cheaper if you gotta pay for movers. Now I don't know necessarily for houses. Um, you know I don't know because I'm not in that department. But you know, I I know I know that for um apartments. So that sucks. I I don't think I've ever like been in a situation like because I've known people that like lived in an apartment for like ten or twelve years. I don't think I've ever heard of a situation where they're like, okay. We don't want you to renew your lease. Um, you gotta find somewhere else. That's crazy. That's oh yeah. That's that's. I mean, it's crazy. Was an eviction. We'd have to be out like in a few weeks. You know. Yeah, so yeah. At least here, you know, we got a few months. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying, like, it just even though, like, I understand you're not. Oh, so put- yeah, I understand you're not pushing why. I would still push why just for my curiosity. But that's just me though. Um. Yeah, but um, but other than that, uh, as far as gaming is concerned, I've been uh, doing you know a good combination of well, Shadowverse and Owl Chronicle. I'm enjoying both of those still. Haven't really been playing much of anything else. There is another bubble game that I've been that I was gonna start demoing, but I've been so distracted with other things I just haven't taken the time to start it yet. But you know, we'll get there soon. Under- um, understandable. I mean. This kind of came up out of nowhere. It's kind of priority because if you don't have a place, if you don't find a place, then you ain't gonna have a place to game. So right, that makes sense. So, but yeah, like I said, for the most part, it's all good. So you that's know, but up. that's been pretty much the week. At least it was somewhat interesting. Yeah, at least, at least it was interesting. Uh, my mine was uh, I know yours actually might top mine this this week. Um, I uh. Just been doing a lot of gaming. I took Monday off um, because my daughter was going to be home. And what up, sedated? Can y'all not hear me? Wait, can y'all? Yo, sedated, thank you so much for the host, man. Oh, wait, y'all can hear me, right? Yo, wait. Wait, yeah, y'all can hear me. (laughs) <laughs> when you went, hmm, bro, you scared me like that. Don't be doing that. Y'all scared me when you go, hmm, like, can we hear Handy Kill Cam? What up, Sedated? How you been, bro? Um, good, good to see you, man. Um, yeah, you're bad. Yeah, bro, you had me tripping because I've been having mic problems, uh, the, like the past few days, but I figured out what's wrong with my mic chat. Me and OG figured it out together, and he didn't even know that he was helping me figure it out, but he, he helped me figure it out. Um, my my uh, XLR cable was loose on the other side. Uh, What's well, good? He hates being called K, bro. He's not kissed from K. Um, But my week's been pretty good, man. Uh, we actually... um. This weekend, um, my church, well, my church has four locations. My church has a, a, um, they've, they've, they've been expanding. They have, um, one here in San Antonio, which you know, and then they have one on uh, like the, like Tupperwine and then they have one on the West side and then they have one on the, um, in Luling and then they have one in Gonzales. Now, mind you, my church is not, you know, a big church. Uh, my pastor at the, uh, set, had a vision to expand, so they've been expanding. Well, uh, out of nowhere, um, sporadically, they were like, yo, we're going to do something for the homeless. Uh, we're going to um, we're gonna do haircuts for the homeless. And that sparked the, eye, that sparked the um, light bulb in my wife's head because we've been wanting to do something for the homeless, but we didn't just want to, like, just give like food like just randomly give food because actually that's like there's a law against that now like you just can't go up and just give them like food because you know uh you have to have like a license or something like that because it might be uh uh 
you know, you might be giving them poison or whatever. So me and my wife have been trying to figure out what to do and, and like try to just be, make it more organized. Well, that was the brainstorm. So we we got these. Um, we went and got like we bunch, we ordered like a bunch of toiletries from Amazon, like toothpaste, um, deodorant, all these like little things. And we uh, make it. A, we made like a care package of a hundred. And we, we went out and gave it to the homeless this weekend while they were getting haircuts. So basically, like, there we get a haircut and a haircut and a hot dog and some, like, some toothbrushes and stuff like that just to, you know, make them feel nice and, and good, you know. And it was cool because um, actually um, one of the homeless guys, um, before he got his haircut, he got offered a job and he was going to have like a job interview the uh like the next coming week or the next couple of days which was really freaking cool cuz he got a haircut and now he got all his fresh stuff to look all fresh and get to brush his teeth and stuff so it was, it was a really cool thing and it actually made the news it made channel 4 news and channel 29 news so it was really cool man um nice. That's so cool. yeah um actually me and my wife are going to be doing more things like this uh later in the year we want to do something for the winter um so and what was really cool is i got to take majority of the twitch money that i've had saved up um and put it towards that so pretty much if you have supported the handy kill kim channel in the past just know that your money wants to go help the homeless which is pretty freaking awesome saying just trying to wrap my head around how I didn't realize Handy lived in San Antonio. I just moved from, I just moved there, like from there, three years ago. Bro, I've been trying to tell you, bro. And you were like, I live in, I live in Texas. And I'm like, yeah, I live in San Antonio. And I'm like, bro. He says, I do something every season, like um, 300 aside and give to the homeless. I give some cash, but I usually, but cost and stuff because it gets way too cold here. Man, bro, sedated, bro. Well, well, there's there's probably my ad for my uh, <laughs> for my <laughs> for my. That's pretty sad when I know it's my ad, huh? And it doesn't even it doesn't even support me. It supports Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even for me. I like that. It's not even for me. I, I, I'm not. I'm not that cool yet. I'm not that famous yet. I don't really want to uh, be that famous. I mean, if it happens, it happens. But yeah, I would love to be partnered. I, that's all I want. That's that's like my major Twitch goals. I want to be partnered, not for the money, because I can care about the split. <clears throat> the way I look at it is like I'm blessed. To be able to get paid to do this anyway, I could care less if Twitch gets more of the money or the less of the money. I just want to do that. To, I just want to be partnered to open more doors, uh, to do more things, okay. to do more things. Just more opportunities. Yeah, or, yeah more opportunities. Uh, so I really didn't get to do a lot of gaming, but the gaming that I did do, um, me and my wife f actually finally beat um, Super Mario, the Super Mario game that we have on the Switch. Which is Super nice. Mario huge. So now we're just going and going and getting all the star coins and getting the extra the secret levels. So um, it's pretty much like the same thing how it was in Super Mario. There's four. Um, you know how like the like in Super Mario there was four uh, four Yoshi coins in one level, or is it four or five? Uh. I think you're. Uh, I don't even remember anymore. But you know, what I'm <laughs> talking about those time. big coins that, like, when you when you when you grab them, it sounds like a little shaker or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, I know what you're talking about. I just don't remember how many there were. Okay. Well, I, I think that uh, Mario World Two Yoshi's Island had something where you had like a bunch of big coins in each level. I'm not sure if it was that one or, or another one, but there was a Mario where you had to you had to collect like bigger coins here and there. But I don't really know what they were called or whatever. Oh, and, and supposedly I wh I whooped Cloudy and Smash, but that's a lie. Quit quit lying, bro. You got to go repent. You, I did not whoop you. You whooped my butt. Like, oh my God, I don't know. I, I created a monster. 
I told Cloudy to get Smash because he would enjoy Smash. And I created a monster. That dude's a beast. And he don't even... And he play on Wi-Fi. He's a beast, bro. Mm -hmm. Cloudy's a beast. I, I only... We played 20 matches. I only beat him one time. Ah. Uh, yeah. So he's being very modest. Got it. Yes, he's very, 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 very modest. Um, also, um, like I said, we've been doing um, the star coins and stuff like that. I was also playing Dauntless um, with Cloudy. I very much enjoy that game over Monster Hunter. Um, again, if you have not played Dauntless and... You were a fan of Monster Hunter, but there was something about Monster Hunter to turn you off. I say give Dauntless a try, man. Dauntless is a very good game. And it's free. Um, He said, I've been... I've been... Uh, into Rocket League, and I downloaded Dauntless, but I haven't played it yet. The only thing that's bad about Dauntless right now is that there's a lot of people playing. So sometimes there's a big queue, um, but uh, the longest I've had to wait is like 20 minutes. But the biggest queue I had was 50, 50 I was in line of 55,000 people. So that was uh, a little crazy, but I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened. I've just, I've been... I've been falling in love with Fortnite again. I don't know what it is. Uh, again, um, just been having fun. I think I think it's the new meta. I think that I like that you can't be one pumped um, anymore. Uh, so I'm just enjoying it. Like to me right now, personally, I feel like Fortnite weapon wise is in a good space. Um, so I've been enjoying that. Um, also, we are we're we're getting close to. Well, I say we're 95, we're 95 away from, from getting our 100, uh, 100, uh, 100 people using my creator code so we can use custom lobbies. Again, y'all know one of the tournaments that I'm going to do, which is the console war tournament, but y'all do not know this next tournament that I'm going to do. It's going to be, it's going to be, let's put it like this. It's going to be groundbreaking and it's going to be history making, but. I gotta be able to. I got. I got. I gotta get the custom lobbies first. So all I ask is if if anybody, you know, if you're not if you play Fortnite and you're not supporting anybody and you and and you know, um, use my creator code, man. I don't care if you spend a dollar, two dollars, or um, or whatever. It's not about the money to me. I just want to get the custom code. Pickaxe only? Yo, <laughs> no, it's not pickaxe only. No, man, it's it's more it's more history in the making than than pickaxe only. But yeah, I just I'm 95 away. We're 95 away, chat. We get in there. <clears throat> um, but other than that, man, my uh my week's been pretty good. Uh, just been you know was busy doing that, so I really didn't get to do a lot of gaming over the weekend that I wanted to. Um, I took Monday off because I was in the sun so much on Sunday from feeding the homeless and stuff or giving the homeless stuff that uh, I got sunburned and everything. And that sun, that Texas heat just drained you. So I was like, yep, I'm going to take, it's a holiday and I'm going to take Monday off. So I took Monday off and just relaxed and kicked it and just watched TV. I didn't watch anime. Cause you know that's not my thing, but I just kicked and watched TV and caught up on some gaming stuff going on. But yeah, it's been pretty much my week. That's not a bad week. No, not bad. I told you your week was more interesting than mine. As far as <laughs> craziness, I use your code. Just don't have V bucks. Yo, Cloudy, man, much appreciated, bro. You you'll get it eventually. If you save the world, you got V bucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, do uh, do appreciate, you know, everybody that supported. Um, yesterday was crazy. I actually had somebody buy, uh, one of my T-shirts yesterday for the first time from sh my Streamlab store. Nice. Was selling really that merch. Yeah, selling that merch though, uh, all the way from Canada too. So man, our first representative is gonna be representing in Canada. Nice. Let's go. So. And and and, mm -hmm. and they are a handy capable person too, so that's even dope. Um, 
So that's nice. really that's really cool. So yeah, it's, it was it's been a it's been an awesome, awesome, awesome time. But other than that, man, that's been my week. What what uh what knowledge you got for us, man? That was a very, very good question. What knowledge do I have for today? Man, yeah. where do we be? I mean, we could go Let's on E three rumors, but I really don't like going down the rumor mill anymore. Um just because there's really yeah, no I haven't even... You're you're breaking up again. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but yeah, I I I I don't like going down the rumor mill because you're just going down a rabbit hole of, a blah. But yeah, maybe maybe they're making you change apartments because really? your internet sucks in that uh, in that building. Maybe that's what it is. Huh? Maybe maybe they're remodeling. Maybe you having a hard time hearing me. No, it's not that I'm having a hard time hearing you. You're just breaking up. Ah, uh, yes, the the patented problem. <laughs> yes, the 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 supposable Discord partner problem, I guess. Yeah, but um, I do have a little bit of news regarding Ten Cent mm. and their plans for Arena of Valor. They're upgrading to Twenty Cent. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they can afford it. That's for sure. Yeah, but uh. Actually, uh, ten or yeah, Tencent basically is changing their strategy to no longer concentrate on the West. Um, and what they mean is they're not going to be pushing for advertisements or anything like that on the West, uh, mainly because, oddly enough, there's just not enough. There's not nearly enough people uh, in the United States and, and Canada and whatnot. There's a lot less people playing here. Then they are playing like in the East, you know, saying like, you know, a China and other, you know, related countries. Yeah. Uh, them. And they, they kind of put it into perspective. So you kind of have something to get a comparison with. Uh, you got about 150,000 daily active players in the U S and, uh, at about a hundred K in Europe. However, uh, in your, in China, they got 55 million daily act, uh, active players. Wow. So when you compare about, well, if you combine, you know, America and Europe, you got about 250K combined versus China having 55 million alone. Uh, being that China is the one that's really making them the money and getting more of the player base, uh, they're going to be doing more stuff in general uh, for the East just to kind of, you know, um, boost things and you would think that since there's not a lot of attention here that they would push more advertising to get more players here but i guess what they're trying to do is cater to wherever is playing the most uh whoever has the most crowd um, well it's probably because it's going to make the most a, it's probably going to make the most money i mean it's harder to it, get yeah. it's hard it's um and turn off the chat cuz you you're, you're li- I think you're liking because you're watching the stream. We'll be all right. Um all right. As long as you're good. I'm good. <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. Um I I think that the reason why is because it's harder to get people to play a game that they don't want to play or they have no uh reason to play. Um and, and to us, and to us, I mean, I, I like Arena of Valor, but to somebody that doesn't know, you know, that's never played Arena of Valor, oh, they're like, oh, that's another League of Legends game. Oh, that's another Smite game. Look at them. They're trying to copy. You know what I mean? So, you know. You brought up something really interesting, actually, because I think there's another reason Ooh. they're going to be not really um i guess catering anymore to them Uh uh-huh there's also reports that they're working on making a mobile version of league of legends oh and i think that's the other reason they're not going to be supporting in the west because here people are more into uh league of legends oh i might actually get into a, a portable version of league of legends oh yeah now don't expect it in 2019, but uh, the, like I said, nothing is final yet, but they're getting with, I think it's Riot Games, and they're going to basically possibly push it for 2020, maybe 2020. Yeah. Oh, now I lost you again. No! Okay. Um, 
That's crazy, dude. Wait. Yep. That's nuts. That is like really nuts. So, I mean, potential League of Legends. Especially if League of Legends gets goes on the Switch. Ooh. That's possible. I, I, I mean, yeah. if we're gonna go mobile. Why not go Switch? I mean, to me, that's what you know. I like about Arena of Valor is that it's on the Switch. You know. Uh, the only problem is, is like when you play ranked games on Arena of Valor, you're not gonna find, you hardly find anybody to play. Um, so that's why when you when you read that article about how like a lot of people are not playing it, it's true. A lot of people are not playing it here, unfortunately. I really like the game. It's one of my favorite games to play on the. It's one of my favorite games to play on the Switch, but I can't play competitively because there's not enough people playing. So, yeah, which is disappointing. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, but I, I definitely do enjoy Arena Arena Valor a lot. So, man, that's 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 kind of sad. Well, speaking on the Switch news, um, Super Mario Maker Two has a very disappointing um main factor in it. Are you ready? Well, so- Okay, so you know how it has like online play, right? Sure. Okay, and how you how people can download your levels and you can play the levels downloaded and you can play the levels together, correct? Online, right? Well, are you ready? Drum roll. You cannot okay. play with your friends. You can only play with randoms. Mm. Let that sink in for a second. You cannot play with your friends. <laughs> you can only play the level with randoms. I don't understand that, but okay. And they say the reason why is because it affects leaderboards. Oh, so they're trying to make it competitive, I guess. I guess. That sucks. So it, it it eliminates some of the fun factor, which I'm really disappointed that Nintendo would make that decision. That really sucks, dude. That like, what's the point? Why do I want to? Yeah. Why do? Why, okay, say for instance, I download your level. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would like to play the level with you. Mm-hmm. But I can't. Nope. Can't do it. Can't do it. And it's it, it brings up a, a crazy point because I really feel like that's like the 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 thing that it's like biting Nintendo right now is it's actually really hard to play with your friends even with yeah. even with Smash like I can't okay so say if me and you want to play Smash together I can't just invite you to a game okay I have to okay. I have to create a room do all these settings to create to create the room, lock it down to friends only, and then give you the code to the room. I can't just be like, yo, um, I'm going to invite you to a game. Mm. And that seems to be something that would be simple to integrate. Right, right. It's not, it's not something hard to do. Um... And I, 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 I think, you know, as much as I've been playing the Switch, as much as I enjoy the Switch, I think this is going to be like my biggest drawback because with the Switch is because, you know, the Switch always has, has the games that you want to play with friends, right? Play together yeah. with friends. But they make it so hard for you to play with your friends. Um, now granted local play, I mean, of course is a different thing, but we're in an age now where local play is not, is not priority. It's nice to have, but that's not the number one priority. It's not the norm. It's right. basically what right. it is. Like right. People don't go to each other's houses to play video games much these days. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and then not to say... You know, I mean, which is okay. I, me, me, and me and Cloudy, we don't use this. We use Discord. Um, 
the only way for you to communicate, and we've talked about this before, but we didn't think it was going to be an issue, but it actually is an issue, and I'll explain why. The only way you can communicate with people on the Switch when you're playing a game is with the app on the phone, right? The Nintendo app on the okay. phone. Now, you would think that would be not be a problem, right? Because, I mean, it is what it is. The app only supports certain games. Mm-hmm. So right now, like for instance, like I can't just get on there and invite you to just talk. You right. have you have to have the game. Like you have to have Smash. If you don't have Smash, we can't voice chat. I mean I can understand, you know, having to be playing the game together to chat because it's not really meant to just have random conversations if you're not doing anything together because you already have multiple ways to communicate with people without, you know, right. a game kind of a thing. So for it to be limited to y'all playing a game together, I still don't really see a problem. Right. But it's still like, say, for instance, like, for instance, like we, my, my biggest thing is, hi, Angela, how you doing? My biggest thing, though, is that like, say, for instance, like what if like you don't have that game and we both have a game that we could play together but we can't talk like ironically mortal kombat does not support it okay 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 i i, I see what you're saying now so it's not that um okay uh, for some reason i was misunderstanding for a second there. it's okay so there are specific games that don't allow it at all yeah, it has to be Nintendo has to it's like partnered with Nintendo's app. So like, yeah, exactly. So like okay. that's okay. that's but annoying. That that's annoying. Okay. That's annoying. Okay, I I thought it was just a situation where you couldn't talk to each other unless you were just playing the same uh, game. No. But if there are certain games that that doesn't allow it at all, yeah, like it's a little bit messy because but if you want to kind of like discuss strategies while you're playing or something like right. that. Right. And then why not have it for all versus or all online multiplayer games like Mortal Kombat? Like it makes no sense. Right. Yeah, it makes no sense at all. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I, okay, so, yeah, I can see the uh, the argument there. That that is a, it can be. So then it brings up the point to you know, and, and again, I'm I'm taking this from some YouTuber. Um, then what's the point of paying the twenty dollars a year or whatever you're paying a month if you can't even properly play with your friends? Yeah, well, if. If you're not the type that plays with others, you probably don't care. Right. But if you're the type that likes to socially game with people, then yeah, I could see it being a turn. Yeah. Um. And but then again, that's where I can I can I could counter that argument and say, well, it's only twenty dollars a year. It's not like PlayStation or Xbox where you're paying sixty dollars a year. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. Right. But it just so. If you're only paying twenty bucks a year, you shouldn't expect a lot. <laughs> but it sucks. That's where they cut the corners with like communication. Yeah. You know, and then when you have a new game that just comes out, and then you can't play with your friends, but it's a it's an online you play you, it's an online multiplayer game. Yeah. Ha- right. You have up to four people playing at one time, but four of those people can't be your friends. Hello, McFly. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, it's to the point to where, like, me and Cloudy, we just use Discord, um, which is nice. But you'd be surprised how many people don't believe in Discord and don't use Discord. But Discord, in my opinion, in one day is going to be the ultimate communication device when it comes to gaming. <sighs> because... Yeah, and there are a lot of apps that do something similar, too. But yeah, go ahead, because... Because, I mean, eventually, like... It, it you know when when Xbox fails when PlayStation fails, what does it fail? Discord. Oh, just jump into Discord. Oh, just jump into Discord. Like that's mainly what I use my Discord for is to is to game. I wanna I wanna make it where it's all that way for my streams, but you know, um, right now it just doesn't have to be You're that. Really way. able to do so much. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. Now it doesn't. And have to- you know. 
Go ahead. That's been an issue with a lot of games too. Uh, but not and not in the sense that you're talking about, but uh, kind of piggybacking off of the whole relying on Discord. You know, back you know I was first playing mobile games. You know, I used to hear a lot of people. You know, when I have guilds and stuff and mobile RPGs or whatever, they would want to get on Discord or some. I think it was a different app at the time, but I'm just going to use the word Discord because that's what I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, for example, all right, guy, let's get on Discord and and chat. And the reason for that is that a lot of games, even the ones where you can message, sometimes the chat sucks. Yeah, it just sucks. Um, it just sucks. Like either one, um, certain words you can't say for one reason or another, or two, you have very limited character space. There are so many things that keep you from being able to chat properly that people just say, let's just go to Discord. And so you have your own Discord for your guild chat or, or whatever game you're playing just to talk because you can't communicate in your game. So this is actually a problem that's been happening for years. Uh, it is still an issue, unfortunately. But good, thank God for Discord. Thank so God for does, Discord. Yeah, that is a way. Yeah, yeah, it's a good way for gamers to communicate. Yeah, and you know, and yes, there's team speak, but there's there's something in my in my opinion that Discord does differently that team speak doesn't do. T t team speak is just like a chatting app. Discord is actually a, a community app that brings communities together, to where you actually can just do more than just chat you know there's a lot more you can do um i'm not plugging discord because i'm partnered um but if you want to join discord you know get a discord go ahead um i use discord a lot more than i i just you know <laughs> i'm just not in my discord a lot not that not that you know that there's nothing wrong with my my discord i just you know i'm just a chill person so if you're gonna chill in uh you know the discord we just go on chill i don't necessarily bring up a lot of stuff in the discord because you know people just be chilling but i i you know it's just cr you know back to the original subject it's just crazy that like nintendo kind of missed the mark here i was actually surprised um also also i have a a correction we talked about how the Nintendo, the 64, was the first to bring the um, the uh, online. We also talked about how we thought it was the Sega Dreamcast. It's not. It was actually Window. It was actually Apple's attempt to make a console that was called the Pitnip Machine, and they were the first ones to bring online capability. To, I've never even heard of that. Yeah, I was uh, I yeah, it's called the uh, Apple Pitnip, and there was actually a few games. There was a a, a Power Ranger game, a few other games, um, but you could actually send emails back and forth, and you had an actual online browser, which is really crazy. So, um, I accidentally stumbled on this video a while um this weekend actually. Uh, cause they were talking, okay. they were talking about how Apple was making the best, how Apple made the best controller at the time. I disagree. I don't think it was. They say it was better than the, um, Nintendo 64 controller. I disagree. Um, you know, the only thing that like separated that controller from, you know, all the other controllers is on top of having a D pad and the buttons, it also had a mouse wheel. But you didn't use the mouse wheel for anything else but for the uh um the online capability as far as using e um um the emails and stuff. So really in my opinion the that controller didn't really bring anything special to actual gaming. So I would have to disagree. But you know, speaking of controllers, just kind of a fun question. What is your favorite console controller? Mm, that's a good question. At, at its basic standards, like not now we're talk, talking about like pro controllers right. or any kind of special controller. We're talking about straight up, just out of the factory, the way it was. What is your favorite controller for a console? Dang. Dang, that's a good question, dude. 
That is a good question. The chime in as well. I'm not going to be able to see it, but you know, yeah. Andy will see it. But yeah. yeah. What's your favorite uh, like uh, uh, console controller just to kind of get a conversation? Man, that's there. that's uh, a good question. And why? Like, oh, what do you like? oh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Yeah. Huh. Cause it, to me every con ev to me every controller had its con, um, you know, right. like major cons. But I honestly, I think I like the Sega controller. Really, the Sega controller. Okay. I think what I like, you like about it. I just liked that it was simple and it was easy and it was durable. Okay. And I'm in a similar boat, but instead of Sega, mine was actually Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Um, because they were they were also very durable, and there were less buttons, so you know things were more simple. Right. Uh, the fact that the uh, outside of the, the the sides of the controller are round, so it fits more comfortably in your hand, and it's not bulky. I actually like that uh, myself. And I've talked to others who like you know the the Microsoft. Uh, controllers for Xbox because they like it the best is bigger. They like having something a little more chunky to hold on to. So everybody has their reasons why they may like a controller. But I, I was definitely a huge fan of the Super NES controller. I'll be honest with you. When I first got my Xbox One and I first got my... Well, when I first got my Xbox and then when I first got my PS4, I wasn't a fan of the controller. I had to force myself to get used to the controllers. Yeah. I just... I don't like I don't like the like I don't know how to explain it but like the the joysticks uh sometimes make it hard for me sometimes um yeah it doesn't matter where they're placed I don't even know where I would place them if I was a controller designer because you know there's not really much you can do but you know what I think it really is I'm gonna be honest with you I think I like smaller sticks like how okay. I, like how how that small stick was on the the 64 controller yeah that I had I think if I mm. had a controller with the small sticks like that I think I'd be good um, the issue that I have with the n64 controller is the fact that the sticks are not very durable at all yeah uh, it's easy to get it out of alignment um, and I'm not really knocking Nintendo for this because I mean this was clearly their first attempt at an actual like stick uh, not like a like a uh, an Atari thing, but like an actual like just stick as as a thing on a controller. It, it was their first time, and it was obviously a challenge. And if you play Mario Party, you might as well get five more controllers because you're gonna break it on just their games alone. Yeah. Um. But the stick was really the only thing I didn't like about the M64 controller. Um. Other than that, I, I know a lot of people don't like the M64 controller, but I did like it for shooter games more than anything else I, I like the fact that where you would shoot the z button is located where an actual trigger would be oh, it felt I like a gun yeah it felt yeah. like a gun like it was pretty legit uh but yeah i mean that's that's not my favorite but it's definitely near the bottom because of how uh fragile the stick itself is. <sighs> nintendo 64 okay nintendo 64 controller was the first controller that i looked at and i was like how i was intimidated yeah I was intimidated. Like I didn't know. I didn't know where to start. Like I didn't know where to start my hand. Like what do how right. do I, you know how do I do this? You know. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I I just like the the Sega controller because I always felt like it was simple enough. I felt I yeah. even felt like the Super Nintendo was too many buttons. Really. Mm hmm. Although the mm. L and the R's were cool. Shout outs to Nintendo because they were the first ones to bring the L's and the R's out. Correct. That's true. They were. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah, yeah, they were. Um, and I mean, we can't really fault PlayStation because they came afterwards. Right. I mean, the very first PlayStation controller also had L's and R's. Um, but but yeah, I mean, so I believe Super Nintendo was the first. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I'm gonna be real with you. <coughs> I'm not a fan of the Rumble Pack. Um, on any controller mm. i'm not on any and, controller. and i'll explain why because in first person shooters it makes you inaccurate true true so i always did it depends on the kind of game you're playing right. right if you're playing 
like a space shooter like Star Fox 64, I think the Rumble Pack. I I, I seriously believe the <laughs> Rumble Pack was made specifically for that game. Yeah, because it does heighten the experience a lot. Uh, what do you have for Star Star, Star Fox 64, which is one of my favorite in 64 was that, games. Was it wasn't that where it was introduced in? Was this was the was the Rumble Pack introduced? With Star Fox sixty four, Star Fox. Yes. you know you you might be right. I could. I I think that's the first game. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that's the first game I remember playing with the Rumble Pack. Because I remember like this big old promotion and like, oh, get Star Fox Star Fox sixty four with the Rumble Pack. Feel the rumble. I remember the commercial. I was like, oh. And then I was Dude, like, uh, they hyped really good back in the day. Yeah. Like, they got you hyped. Yeah, there's gaming commercials now suck. I'm just being real. Because there's nothing to them anymore. Uh, they, I mean, uh, they, they get excited about. They suck. They suck. Like they're like the only thing that's cool about gaming commercials is a good trailer. But other than that. There's no good. But that's like, not even a commercial. It's a trailer. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's yeah, different. yeah. There's <laughs> no. There like. You don't see like, and I'm just I'm just being like random. You don't see scuff controller commercials on regular TV. And that, no. And I'm like, why? You don't even like. You might see a PlayStation com- commercial here and there, but it's to promote a game. It's so exclusive on PlayStation. Okay. Yeah, and that's the thing is they're more advertised on the console than the game. They're just saying you can get this game with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel you there. It's not high. Like, I remember he buy Star Fox today. Get the rumble. Feel the rumble of each blast. Each move. Enjoy Star Fox. That probably wasn't exactly how it went, but that's how it felt in my brain. And... You, oh, yeah. you wanted Star Fox. So bad. Want- Although the reason for my hype wasn't really the commercial. I was I was a part of Nintendo Power, not working for them. I was in the club uh, getting magazines and stuff, and they actually sent me a VHS tape of, <laughs> you know, Star Fox 64 before I came out. Uh-huh. And that presentation, oh, man, that was the most hype thing I've ever seen advertised for for video games. It really yeah, was. I remember it an excellent job with that. I remember when we came over to your house and we all watched it together. Oh yeah. I Everybody remember. was five. Oh yeah. <laughs> that that's when that's when OG was an intern over for uh, Nintendo. Oh lord. He, he started in his diapers. <laughs> he was Apparently. <laughs> he was he was born bred at Nintendo. <laughs> um but yeah, yeah. I thought it was possible. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely possible. But um Speaking of which, and I know, I know I said I was going to go down this rumor mill, but I have to bring this up. But of course you are. <laughs> I have to because it goes hand in hand with what we're talking about. So, you know how everybody's yeah. talking about the Nintendo Switch Pro that's going to be supposedly coming out. There was this um, right. there was this guy, it's the same guy that was bringing up the um, Apple controller, but this one actually made sense. He said... Normally, when when Nintendo like has a good console on their hands, they normally like do some kind of like hardware upgrade, but it's not like a full console. Like, like the Nintendo sixty four had the expansion pack, remember? Right. Okay. Yeah. He said, "So what if?" And this is a, this kind of blew my mind. He said, "What if the the Switch Pro is actually just an, an another dock?" Mm-hmm. You know how we have the original, dock, yeah. uh, just a better dock that like makes it run better, makes it run better at a higher resolution, and stuff like that in dock mode. I was like, huh? I was like, that's not very far fetched. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not a you know, it's not an unreasonable rumor, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because you're not having to redesign the switch, right? <clears throat> And you know, and they then they can make it where like only certain games can run on the new dock, so you have to buy the new dock. Which remember, with the new 3DS, certain games only ran on the 3DS, on the new 3DS. Which, by the way, um, they're not going to be making any more games for the 3DS as well. Yes, 3DS is uh, R.I.P. They're still doing updates. 
updates. They're still doing updates, but they're not making any more games. Yeah, 3DS is RIP, which I mean makes sense. It's it's yeah. time it's time to get on the Switch train. If you are a Nintendo handheld person and you have a 3DS, look, I never got to enjoy the 3DS, but I'm telling you, Switch is the Switch is the place to go. So, you know, yeah. you know. Now, I'm not saying get rid of your 3DS. There's probably games you can play that you probably can't play on the <sighs> Switch because right. the 3DS does have some really good rehashes. Um, like Legends of Link to the Past and other, you know certain although, RPGs. Although that is uh, coming to the uh, Switch. Oh, yeah, it is. But um, but there might be a few games that are on a 3DS that you might not be able to play on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Unless they open up their entire library, then you, know, then you might as well get a Switch at that point. But, yeah. You have a 3DS, Cloudy? That's what's up. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I found that. I was like, man, I was like, that actually makes sense. Yeah. I would. No, I never owned a 3DS, but I had the regular DS. And even the regular DS was pretty legit. You know, that again, you know, everybody was surprised. Some people were surprised that, you know, that the Switch was touchscreen. And I'm like, how are you surprised? Why wouldn't it be? I was like, the 3DS was touchscreen. Touchscreen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was in so much soccer. I was like, I guess because they were looking at Switch more as a console than a handheld, and I think that's what threw everybody off. Even though you could play it handheld. <laughs> yeah, here, here, here's a random fun fact about Super Mario Two, uh, Super Mario Maker Two. Also, <clears throat> the European um, region, when you pre-order the um, 3DS, get they get a stylus. Uh, a Super Mario Maker 2 stylus. So when you make your con- um, um, levels in in on the handheld mode, you actually have like a little pin, right, to help create uh-huh. your controllers, but or your levels. But <clears throat> US will not be getting it. So interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. I don't know. Oh, Nintendo, man. <clears throat> But on a, on a higher light of Nintendo, um, there's another port coming to Switch. Are you ready? Okay. The Witcher 3 yeah. is coming to the Switch. I was very surprised. Um, yeah, that is actually a pretty popular title when it dropped, yeah. Yeah, and it's very uh, graphic intensive. So I was very I was very surprised how much, you know, how it was going to be on the Switch. That was going to be pretty sick. I never got to play The Witcher, so I might have to pick it up. I might yeah, have to pick it up to give it a try. just to give it a try. Um, I will be getting that puzzle game that's coming out at the end of the month on the Switch. Um, it's a puzzle fighter. Okay. Um, puzzle actually, fighter, yep. I think it comes out today or tomorrow. <coughs> I, uh, that's what I love about Nintendo. It's like they make crazy cool games like that, so... You know, like puzzle fighters and stuff like that. Although, the my first puzzle fighter I actually got into was on it was mobile, so, and I'll also be getting um, Marvel Alliance three or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll be getting that. Marvel Ultimate Alliance, I think. Is. Yeah, three. Yeah. Yep, yep. I will definitely be getting that. I hope it looks good. It really does. It really does. But again, Nintendo, listen to me, Nintendo, Nintendo. Listen to me. I don't care if you sue me for another 10 cents. Please make it to where I can play with my friends. Please. Please. If you make it where I have to play random with randoms, I'm going to be very upset. I really am. Please make it where I can play with my friends. Please. And, and can we fix this? Because I honestly think that it's an easily online fix. Um, or easily like software fix. Or they could just make it where you can play with your friends. Hope. A simple upgrade. Yeah. It, it will have online play, Cloudy. It will. They already said it's going to have online play, bud. Uh, also, the X-Men will be in it. The, they announced that the X-Men will be in the game. So, it's going to be crazy. A lot of people are going to be in this game. I do recommend, if you are a superhero fanatic, like as myself, to get this game. Uh, especially because it's exclusively only going to be on the Switch. So, yeah. <clears throat> That's gonna be pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah, Nintendo has strong exclusives. They really do. Yeah, they 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 actually 
in my opinion, they they they're neck and neck with PlayStation. Because right now, play as right now, the right now the exclusives right now on PlayStation right now are kind of meh. But right now, I'm like, ooh, I want to play that on the Nintendo. Nothing to brag about. Yeah, nothing to brag about on on the PlayStation right now. Nothing to brag about on the Xbox right now either. Um, I actually have a feeling that Dauntless is going to be coming on the Switch. Um, if Dauntless comes on the Switch, oh my god. That would be pretty big, because I know that's a pretty popular title as well. Bro, you need to check it out. We need to play. You you and yep. your you and your woman would like it. It's a better to me it's a better version of Monster Hunter because it's more simplistic. It's not as complicated as Monster Hunter is. Yep. But it still has the yep. enjoyment and the challenge of Monster Hunter. Um, in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe Cloudy can tend yeah. dis- cause maybe Cloudy could disagree or not, because Cloudy's been putting in more hours than me. Uh, cause I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. Um if you if your stats carry over, that would be dope. That would be dope. But why wouldn't they carry over? All you would have to do is enter in your Epic account, and I mean they are Switch has Fortnite, so I mean it's very possible. It's very possible. Oh, and something else they dropped on the Switch undercover. Um, I didn't even know this was out. You can actually buy it on the Switch right now at the Founder Pack. Realm Royale entered in on the Switch. So you can now be the chicken on the Switch. And apparently it plays really play apparently it plays better on the Switch than it does on other consoles. So I don't know. I I have yet to find out. I'm not paying the fifteen dollars for it to find out, but just throw <coughs> throwing that out there. But other than that, now that I've done a little side questing, OG, what other news do you have before I drop my big topic of the day? Wait, are you here? Yeah, for some reason, I, just, I stopped hearing you all of a sudden. No. But uh, I think that was on my end. Okay. But um, actually, Battle Royale games in general seem to play better on mobile than anything else. <clears throat> yeah, it's very true. Because PUBG Mobile is like strong. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I know. You know, I could probably go PUBG uh, Pro right now, mobile. I haven't really heard anything about Realm Royale, so I don't know anything about that, or or if it's on mobile or not. I'm not even no, sure. No, it's not on mobile, but it's on Switch now. Um, I actually saw a dude playing it. Apparently, you could pay fifteen dollars for the Founders Pack and play it. Uh, Cloudy said it's okay. getting challenging. On Dauntless for me now, I'm getting d- dooboot on. Well, that's you want to know why you're getting dooboot on? Let me tell you why you're getting dooboot on. Because you decided to go way up in the beyond your friend, and now you and, and now your friend can't help you. Uh, me, I'm just messing with you, man. Um, but well, yeah. Then. Yeah, no, no, no. Let me tell you what happened, right? So the servers were down, right? And so, like, I'm like, Cloudy's like, yo, yo, bro, I will let you know. I will text you when the servers are back up and it is stable to play. I was like, bet. So, like, I've just been, but you know what? I was like, I'm just going to grind Fortnite. I was like, my goal is to get better at Fortnite. My goal is to when people see me, they they better they better outbuild me because if they don't outbuild me I'm gonna shoot them right so like, that's all I've been working on is my aim on my aim on Fortnite right <clears throat> so like <laughs> I've been like it's been like four or five days right and I'm like dang I haven't heard from Cloudy about Dauntless oh yeah the server's been up for like you know the next day and he's been freaking playing it and he's like level twenty something and I'm still like level freaking five no i'm really Uh-oh. level i'm really level like uh i think eight but still he's over here double digit mm. over here and i'm a weakly i'm like cloudy bro you supposed you supposed to hit me up <laughs> <laughs> and he just like he took off and i'm like dang <laughs> so like now i'm now i'm getting super carried Yo, what up, yeah. what up, what up, what up, what up, woo, what's good, what's good, what's good, woo, what's good, what's good. Uh, but yeah, so, I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> Cloudy, 
went off without me. And then he was all, he, sure did. he was like, yeah, I just want someone to play with. Well, Cloudy, you had somebody to play with until you went oh, super off like a rocket. No, I'm just kidding. It's all good, bro. Much love, bro. Um, But yeah, so other than that, man. So what other news you have for us, OG? Well, um, I get into my big topic, but go ahead. It's just one of those things that I, I, I'm going to mention this, and I guess it's to be expected at this point because of all the Mm -hmm. hassle and drama that's been about this in general. Mm. But uh, it has been reported that the Sonic the Hedgehog movie has now been delayed. (laughs) Oh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, uh-huh. that that, and I'm not even joking. Like it said that uh, it has its November release date because it was supposed to come out in November of this year. It's now pushed back to February of 2020. Wow. Yep. Wow, that's big. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Oh, the act that the director found out it's not as easy to just copy and paste and delete. <laughs> like what? Is, here's the thing. And you know what? People are going to complain about this. And I'm going to just say this. Okay. I don't know nothing about the movie business. But I know a lot about editing. And I know... I know about, like, you know, content creation when it comes to YouTube and stuff like that. Let me tell you something. Don't complain about something to be changed and then get it to be changed and then complain how long it takes. Because it's not just as easy as... Oh, okay, let me just go and and fix a few things. Delete Sonic from the scene, and then, and then put the new Sonic in the scene. They practically probably have to reshoot the whole movie in some parts. Yes, yeah, so it's not a Control C and a Control V. Uh, there's yeah. coding involved. Yeah, so, uh, so. yeah, green screen, lighting, all this stuff has to take place. And then, because let me tell you something, because let me tell you how. How the world is today. Because then, if he doesn't execute it properly, then he's going to catch more flag for not executing it properly when he had a second chance. But we didn't give him a chance the first time to execute it because we we judged it before it was even executed. Mm Mm-hmm. We sure did. For all we knew, for all we knew, it would have been executed okay. But us as as being crybabies, and I'm putting me in the mix because I cried too. But then, you know, God set me down and had a little chit-chat with me and was like, no, you you wrong. And I was like, yeah, you right, I'm wrong. Like, we, do, we, don't know where, we don't know where he was going with it. We have no idea. And us complaining got it changed, and now we're going to be complaining again. February 2020? And to be more specific, because this is the part that I think is funny, it's actually coming out on February 14th. Oh. For those who don't know, that's Valentine's Day. Yeah, that day ain't real anyway. So I, I can see it now. Hey, girl, uh, I'll, I'll just show you how much I love you. We're going to go see Sonic. <laughs> 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 now, if your girlfriend happens to love Sonic, dude, like you, you're set for a year. But mm, yo, that, I don't, I don't know, I thing. don't know any woman right now that like absolutely loves Sonic like that. I just don't. I'm sure there's someone out there, but I, I I know I know I know women with Mario. Yo, take it, you know. Mm. But I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna say this: Valentine's Day is just a made up holiday anyway. So, but oh, I know, but it's still kind of funny. Uh, oh no, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. He said, "I feel they should have never shouldn't have changed." Yeah, I agree. Even though I complained about it, it was fun for me to complain about it and ran on. It was entertaining, like. Like I said, God, God set me down and we had to talk. And he was like, bro, he was like, you totally judged that, dude. And I was like, you know what? I was like, you right. I did. And I'm wrong for that. Um, you know. And look what it caused. You I know. alone pushed them <laughs> down. Not I, I wish. I, dude, man. Only if God give me. The, God knows better than to give me that kind of power. Um, yeah, well, no one should have that kind of power. Uh, but, but, yeah. but you'd be surprised how many people do when it comes to content creators. Yeah. Uh, it sucks, dude. It really sucks. Uh, mm-hmm. People can influence but, uh, somebody to buy something or not buy something. It's crazy. 
Yep. And then they did mention in quotations, taking a little more time to make Sonic just right. Yeah. Which I'm not really sure even really what that means with the kind of graphics you're trying to do. So. Mm, like, wh <laughs> why don't we just make it like a cartoon movie at this point? Yeah. Why don't we just make it's it like all it's fully animated? That make would almost make more sense. <laughs> can we just can we just make Jim Carrey a voice of ro of a of a of a of a ro um Doctor Robotnik character? I didn't even think that would even be better. Almost, I don't know. I, but it's because Disney's getting into live action, so everybody wants to get into live action. And to be honest with you, I'm not looking for and Aladdin's out. I don't know. I. I'm a big fan of Disney movies. Jungle Book was awesome. The live action Jungle Book was awesome. But did you know? <coughs> <coughs> Coffee got stuck in my dump. Did you know? That was not the first live action Jungle Book movie. That's actually the second or the third. Um, there was one made back when I was a kid. Just the animals didn't talk. So, right. you know, it was just Mowgli talking to the animals. And... You just guessed what the animal said because you knew the cartoon. Um, but, you know, Disney's getting into live action, so everybody wants some live action. I just want to see somebody try to remake Mario, man. Let's remake Mario. Actually, I want to watch Mario again. This is why I wish I could watch movies on stream because I would just, I would love to watch like a weird movie like that on stream with you guys and just talk about it. You know, like Mario. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Um, I know there's a yeah, live action movie is a thing though because yeah. uh, Netflix does a lot of anime live action, which is actually pretty cool. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. I was really, really doubting it. I thought it was a stupid idea at first, but then once my girlfriend sat me down and got me to watch some of it, I was like, "All right, fine. It's not terrible. Live action's okay now." I miss the live action Mortal Kombat series on YouTube. Oh, dude, that was awesome. I that missed... was a Street Fighter Assassins or whatever. Yeah, I miss that so oh, much, it. dude. Oh, my God. And it's like right when I got into it all, Machinima went downhill and they canceled everything. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. Oh, why is it every time I like something, they got to take it away? Oh. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I was so sad. And then you can't even find it anymore. Like, I tried to watch old episodes. You can't even find it. Sucks. Really? Yeah, I've literally looked. Speaking of um, Netflix, I actually um, got the app on my TV now. Like my actual TV. Okay. Not just my PlayStation or whatever. I got it on my actual TV. And I've been yeah. experiencing the 4K Ultra Netflix experience. I got to say, it's pretty nice. Got to say. I actually, know right. the, I actually know the difference between 4K, 1080p, and 720p. Now let me let me explain something. I know the difference on paper, like I know the difference, but I mean with my eyes. I know when I look at something if it's 4K, 1080p or 720p. It drives me nuts, and that's why I've been trying to upgrade my stream quality. Cause now, now to me in my eyes, my stream quality looks like crap. Because <laughs> you got spoiled with 4K. Because yeah. I got spoiled with 4K, so I'm like, okay. How can I push the envelope without it being... Because you can't stream... Nobody can stream in 4K. I don't care who you are. You can't stream in 4K. But how can I... How can I get mine... Because I'm, I'm not in 1080p right now. I can't stream in 1080p. Because my computers they can't handle it. So I'm like, how can I push the envelope to getting close to 1080p without crapping my computer? And we've been, we've been experimenting. I've been trying 900p, but for some reason my computer don't like 900p. So, but yeah, I, I actually know the difference now. My eyes know the difference. It's crazy. It sucks, kind of. Yeah, it's difference between hearing the numbers and actually seeing the product in front of you. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. The big difference. Yeah, it, it sucks though when you like now that you know that you know because you're like, oh, I, I want for I want to see this because it's so much clearer. It's so much easier on your eyes. It's weird. I'm like, man, maybe yeah, that's, yeah. maybe that's why I'm like, I have a hard time seeing stuff because it's in like lower quality. I was about to say crappy quality, but lower quality. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's crazy though about Sonic. This really is nuts. Yeah, it is. It's really nuts. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get into my meat and potatoes. Um, about what's been going on. 
with this whole optic situation. Um, I'm not going to get into who's right and who's wrong. All I got to say is go watch Hex's video. And basically what I'm going to talk about is what nobody, nobody talked about. And you'd be like, well, what do you mean? What do you know? And I'm, and I, and here, here, here's what I'm saying. I'm going to talk about the whole thing from a moral standpoint. Um, seeing the perfect sounds and like seeing, seeing product. Oh, seeing product sounds like a cr uh, criminal term. Yo, yo, I, I got a, I got a crime ring on the side. I'm just kidding. Um, maybe back in the day. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, here's the thing I want to talk about. So, the, the, the three things I want to talk about is, you know, we had, we had Tifu versus FaZe, right? We had, well, Tifu versus Banks, FaZe, whatever. And then you had, you have Nick Merckx versus Nate Shot, 100 Thieves, Nate Shot. And then now you have Hex versus Optic J. And who is now the president of Infinite Esports. And... I just gotta say something, man. I I'm not I'm not taking I'm not here to talk about like anybody's side who's right or who's wrong. I just gotta say all three situations suck. Because you wanna know why they all three situations suck is because all three of these people were like really all three of these situations but all three of these situations they uh, both of them were all of them were like really close friends. You have you have you have, you know, Nick Merckx and Nate Shot. They were really close friends. Practically, Nate Shot and Nick Merckx practically built 100 Thieves together. You know, like, Nate Shot picked up Nick Merckx before 100 Thieves was even announced. And, like, they were just, you know, cr creating content. You know, <clears throat> you know, you have, you know, Tifu or um, Banks saw something in Tifu. Tifu put all this energy and time and built this relationship with Tifu, they became really good friends. And then you had Hex and Optic J, they practically built a brand together and made Optic what it was, what everybody fell in love with. And it just, you know, it's, it's crazy what can happen. And I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go a little spiritual on y'all, but y'all got to y'all got to y'all got to bear with me, okay? Because this is how God brought it to me. And I was like, whoa. I was like, I didn't even think about it like that. And it goes back to what we were saying last week in last week's episode. That, you know, for the love, for the love. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to requote this. For the love, the love of money it is, a, is the root of all evil. And that's what happened, man. Like, doesn't matter which side it was or whatever the case. Someone fell in love with the money. And it caused them to be out of character. It caused them to be out of place. It caused them to put their friendship on the line to betray their friendship in which way. Whoever you feel betrayed whose friendship, whatever the case may be, that's that's on you. I, I'm not I'm not here to say who or what. But at, in all three of these situations, there was some kind of betrayal. And but the betrayal happened because of for the love of the money. This is why us <clears throat> as who we are and who we are in this business, we can't forget who we where we came from. We can't forget who we are. We can't forget who the ones that really supported us and and and, and show you know love for us, not just money and financially. <clears throat> I'm talking like support, like support, because guess what? Support don't mean money. Support means when you, when you going through something and, and, and you, and you, and you are like your backs up against the wall and you still have somebody to, to say, you know what? I got you, bro. Let's get up out this mess together. Support is not always money. Yes. Does the support come through money sometimes? Yes. But that's not the main factor. You know what I'm saying? Um, and but when we when we when we when we when we start to get money and we start to fall in love with the money, we tend to forget about those things. We tend to get blinded and we tend to see this this bigger vision.
but it's not really a bigger vision of how to better yourself or better the brand. It just tends to get to be like, well, how can we make the most capital? How can we profit from this investment? How can we multiply what we already have financially? And that that becomes a problem because when those become your main focuses as a content creator or whatever you're doing in life, it doesn't even have to be in streaming, you tend to lose focus of who you are. You tend to lose focus of who has really been supportive of you and who's really been there for you. You tend to think, oh, because they're pumping the most money into you that they have your full uh what is it called your full heart intention and you know it's crazy what does it say he says sometimes when when you're friends with the boss on a business venture you lend to forget who the boss is that's why military officers are not allowed to friends with the military oh, okay I see what you're saying yeah I don't know man and it's just hard because sometimes you 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 start a business with a friend you know what I mean and you know in some of these cases I'm not going to talk about what because again I'm not picking side well I could talk about it like this optic with the whole optic situation like Hex trusted Optic J because that was his friend at the end of the day. And that was his boy. It's kind of like me and OG, right? Like OG trust me what I do with this podcast, right? Now, I don't have to go to OG with my decisions, but I do. Even though OG trusts me with everything. It's good to have support. Right, right. He he trusts me with the decisions that I make, you know what I'm saying. But I I I still I still go yo what up Joy, I still go to him with every decision, and I mean every decision, every decision. There is no decision that is not made without OG's input, and if he dis if he disagree with the decision that I make, then the decision's not made. That's just how I am, because. We have to be on one accord with this podcast, right? If we're not on one accord, if we're not on the same page, this, even though, you know, to some people this may seem small or whatever the case may be, you know, it's not going to function well. You know what I mean? It's not going to go well. And I feel like that's, you know, how it happened, you know, with Optic and uh, Hex is that they were, you know, best friends they were on some at the same page at some point <clears throat> and then some way around the you know whoever side you whatever the the money got involved and somebody wasn't on the same page they were no longer one accord and so you know one person was making decisions without the other person like knowledge or 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 you know whatever the case may be and you know, when you're not one accord, when you're not, when you when you're not, you know, on the same page with your partner that you're in in, in a business with, or your friend or whatever, that it, it becomes a mess. It becomes a mess, and and like, and that's really what it all became a part on all three of them. Like, they none of them were on the same page anymore. Uh, you know, Tifu wasn't on the same page with with Banks. And and faith, you know, uh, you know uh, the the optic situation. Nobody was on the same page, uh, you know. Um, and the, the Nick Mercs and the 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 Nate shot thing. Nobody was on the same page, like, and the and and whatever side you agree with, whatever side you say is what it is. That's pretty much. The, the root of it all is nobody was on the same page. They allowed, you know, money to get in the way. To get it, they allowed money to get in the way in their vision, and it sucks. 
you know, whoever now who you know whoever allowed the money to come in on one side of the vision, you know, that's that's opinionated. You know, we all have our opinions. You know, one person says one side, one person says the other side, the other person says the other side. But at the end of the day, like it's nobody's business. Cause at the end of the day, like you are not in that person's shoes. Like I'm not in Tifu's shoes. I'm not in Phase Bank's shoes. I'm not in Optic Hex's shoes. I'm not in Infinite's shoes, which is also owned by or the president is rent the Optic J is the president of Infinite. You know, I, I I'm not in his shoes. I'm not in Nick's Merck's shoes. I'm not in Nayshot's shoes. But at the end of the day, all I can tell you this, from the outstanding point looking in, at one point they were all in one accord. And then now they're not all in one accord no more. And they allow something to get in between of what they originally their vision was. And I guess that's the lesson that what you know what what I, I want to say is don't let things on the outside get in the way of your vision. Don't let people on the outside get in the way of your vision because it will alter your decision and mess everything up. Um you got to stay on the path. You got to stay in one accord. You have to you have to stay you have to remember where you came from, right? This is the main reason why I you know, I always play with the Xbox squad. Doesn't matter if I like PlayStation more or not, because guess what? PlayStation didn't get me where I was. You know what? You know what got me where I was? The Xbox Squad. You know who believed in me before I had a PlayStation? The Xbox Squad. You know who were always there for me on the streams? The Xbox Squad. Well, yeah, at God, yes. But I'm talking about like, 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 like. Like when, 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 yes, God, more importantly, yes, God. But I'm talking about like where I came from as far as like streaming wise, you know what I mean? Like you guys are the reason why you guys are the beginning of my streams. You know what I'm saying? You know, Ghost, uh, Cybernetic Frog, Crew Dog, Boobies, DB, uh, who else? A bunch of y'all, man. You know, a lot of y'all. So for me to be like, to be like one day, like say for instance, if, 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 if 100 Thieves comes in here and be like, yo, we're going to sign you, bro. I can't be like, okay, I'm signing 100 Thieves. Guess what? I'm just going to play with Optic Courage. I'm just going to play with Courage all day long. No. You know, and I got you a PS4. He said, if you got a PS4 Pro, you would you would forget about the Xbox squad. Yo, if I could afford a PS4 Pro, but I can't even afford a PS4 Pro. But um, no, I wouldn't forget about the Xbox squad. I would still be doing the same thing. I mean, I'd just be playing a lot of Fortnite. You know what I'm saying? I'd just be playing a lot of Fortnite, so I can end up playing with both. But yes, God is the reason why I'm here. More importantly, you were definitely right. But, you know, what I'm saying as far as, like, streaming-wise, like, I can't forget those that were there to support me in, 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 in the long run. And yes, w when I grow, or some people are going to change on and possibly not like how I do things, of course, it's... It's, 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 cause I'm going to change in some ways. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a learning experience. Are some people going to like some things? Nope. Are some people going to fall off? Yep. But guess what? You can't cater to those people. You just got to keep going and keep pushing and, you know, and totally just not lose sight of who you are and your vision and what you believe in. <clears throat> and I feel like that's exactly what happened. You know, that people got off the off one accord and basically you know some people were unhappy and they were trying to cater to the you know to the bigger ups and it it, it just becomes a thing and it, and it all boils down to that one verse that the love for the love of money is the root of all evil because it will make you do things that you normally wouldn't have done when you really love that money it it's the truth it's the truth i've seen it happen too many times do do I do I know what's gonna happen in all these situations? Nope, I don't. But you know what? At the end of the day, guess what? It's all gonna be okay. Whether if Optic loses out, whether if Optic loses out, 
<laughs> more money problems. Yeah, more money, more problems. If optic, if there's no more optic, he, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, it sucks. I always have love and respect for optic because optic is what got me into Call of Duty. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I've always been one to like, like I'll watch somebody and that will get me hyped into Call of Duty. Like. I used to watch a lot of old optic stuff, you know, when 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 Call of Duty first came out, you know, um, you know, Nick Marks is still gonna be doing his own thing, you know, and Phase is gonna, you know, Phase and Tifu are gonna rise from the ashes, you know, it's just it's just what it is, it's, you know, things happen, but just know that I'm giving you this advice here. Don't allow, don't, don't allow it to happen to you, you know, because some of you guys that are either listening or watching right now, some of you guys are going to be offered some big opportunities, whether it be in streaming, whether it be, you know, in school, whether it be in sports, whether, whether, whatever it be, whether it be a promotion to your job, don't let the money blind you and make you forget who you are and who your real friends are and who your supporters are, because at the end of the day, that's going to mess you up. That's going to mess you up, man. And, yo, that's my that's my whole... I, I told you all yesterday that was gonna, I was going to come out with a whole other outlook because as soon as I heard that, as soon as I saw that and I watched that video with Hex, I was like, God spoke to me like that. And I was like, whoa. I was like, yeah. And I was like, I got to come at it from that perspective because, you know, that's just who I am and that's what God put on my heart to say. And, you know... It's it's probably not the most entertaining thing to say, but that doesn't matter. It's not going to be the most anything what people really want to hear, but that's the truth. That's the truth, man. And it sucks when that happens, but it happens. It happens. All right, OG, you got anything you want to say? I know you've been going well, in and out of mood there. As far as uh, the you know the topic you brought up, there's not really much more I can really add to it. Yeah. Um, I did actually see the situation you talked about last week, talked about on another uh, YouTube channel that I watched who discussed what actually happened between the two because, you know, they also report on random things, uh, you know, and this happened to be the subject they happened to bring up. And it, it really sucks how it happened. Um, and, you know, you just got to be careful when you're going into business with anyone you know, yep. that's kind of why when, you know, because for those of you who know, I, one of my dreams is to own my own land center where I basically have people come in and they can pay X amount of money an hour to play on my consoles and just have a good time. It's an escape from your crazy grind of life just to come over and play games and just have fun. Right. Well, I'm not going to go into business with anyone. It's literally just going to be me. Yep. And the reason for that is because if I get a friend involved, I could lose that friendship yep. because I've seen friendships get split up because of a business. Yep. Uh, I've actually physically seen that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, I actually have people who talked about mm -hmm. wanting to go into business with me legitimately. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought about it for a little bit, but it was only because there would be financial backing. But the problem is, is they're going to have a lot to say. So when I don't agree with certain things and I don't want that to come between me and my friend and me and my business. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going solo myself. Yep. Me, uh, when, when this happens. me and OG have even talked about it together before we even started this podcast. When he told me, you know, about doing this, I was like, bro, I was like, let, I was like, if you want, let's go, go to business together. But then we, we really sat down and thought about it. We thought we was like, man, our, <laughs> our friendship is more valuable than, than the, than going into business together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you could say this is a business like what we're doing now, but really not. It's not. It's just something we love to do. And at the end of the day, if one of us ends up stopping doing this, we're dead. that's the end of the OG podcast. Like if if OG says one day, OK, I'm done. I'm I'm not doing the podcast no more or whatever the case may be, you know, which I hope it never gets to that. But you never know. Life happens. You know, he might yeah, life he, could happen. He might, he might, he might get to be the owner of his store and be like, Look, I don't have time to do the podcast. That's the end of the OG podcast. Like, there's no more. You know, no more OG podcasts. Like, I'm not gonna replace OG because that was, you know, that's me and his thing. But you know, 
we we've talked about it before, and we 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 value our we value our friendship over than being a bit than having a business. Now I'll help, I'll support him, like whatever. But you know what I'm saying, like you know whatever he needs. But as far as like going to business together, like yeah, we've even decided that it's not worth our friendship. You know what I mean? Because this is like a 20, 30 year French, 30 year friendship. And you can't put no money on that, man. Ain't you, a lot of people don't have those kind of friendships. And just because let, let, let me let me let me break something down to you too. Just because you know somebody for twenty or thirty years doesn't mean you have a good friendship with them. Like I know other people that you know for twenty or thirty years, but I don't have the friendship that I have with that I do with OG. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah like that's not it's you can't put money on that you know no i don't care if 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 if, if it made me an og like a multimillionaire, and we could do whatever we wanted like that it it, it it it's not worth it to me it's not and we discussed that you know because i know i know one day that's gonna i know one day his dream's gonna come to pass god don't god don't give us dreams and visions just for us not to do it we just got to be willing to act out on it and step on the faith when the opportunity comes. Boom! Sorry, I don't mean to go all deep on y'all, but it's just who I am, man. Just who I am. But Going uh, handy deep on them, boys. Going <laughs> handy deep. The next show coming mm-hmm. soon, handy deep in esports. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, but um, one subject I do need to bring up, which is it's, it's something that we talk about often, but it's something that's actually becoming official, which is it's concerning, and we'll see what happens. But uh, the World Health Organization, or the WHO, <laughs> I know has doing. officially, yes. on paper, recognized gaming disorder as an illness. Yes, yeah. It mm. is actually on paper. Um, this was uh, after 194 members voted uh, anonymously um, that on May 25th of 2019, it was voted that that yeah, uh, basically gaming disorder is a legit illness in their mind. Yeah. And they're actually going to be starting to enforce things probably within the next couple of years. Uh, as a matter of fact, to kind of give you guys an idea of how it's being defined, because, you know, you think gaming disorder, what is that? So here's what it says. Under these new classifications, gaming disorder has been defined as a pattern of gaming behavior, digital gaming or video gaming, characterized by impaired control over gaming increasing priority given to gaming over other activities to extent to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other interests and daily activities and continuation of escalation of gaming despite the occurrence or negative consequences and to be diagnosed with this uh, this has to be a pattern of behavior that has to be evident for at least 12 months this is crazy. I know me and my wife heard this last night. I mean, we were we were very upset because, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, because then now there's going to be people saying, come to me, you know, you have a video game disorder. And I'm like, no, it's something I do because I love to do it. And it's, a sh- you know, I love doing streaming. Um, the, the, I, I, the funny thing that I found funny is that it says it impairs – things to make you want to do things in life or priority or whatever you just said. But the thing is, it's like, if that's the case, people already deal with mental uh, mental illnesses that deal with that already. So what if, hear me out, what if the video game thing is the only thing they want to do because the other mental illnesses or like messing with it because like when you're depressed, like like one of the one of the things of this is why I want to get into, I want to get a mental health license like like blah, 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 license because I've you know done a lot of research like when you're depressed, depression a sudden depression you don't want to take showers, you don't want to eat, you don't want to do all these things. There's certain things you don't want to do when you're depressed. There's certain things you don't want to do, or there's certain things to how you act when you're dealing with anxiety there's certain ways you act when you are dealing with um 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 can't think of the word 
so like so um so uh, what is it called social like when you don't want to be social like when you like social anxiety yeah social anxiety like there's so many things that like that quote unquote make you don't want to do the things that are that are being labeled under this gaming disorder and people are like missing the mark that like video gaming is like the answer to those things video gaming gets you out of depression video gaming gets you out of being socially um anxiety video gaming like stops anxiety you know what i mean uh you know in some cases video game helps with ptsd you know there's a lot of things that video games help but because now now hear me out because they're testing these people that already have these other issues quote unquote anxiety um quote unquote um depression quote unquote bipolar quote unquote ptsd and they probably haven't been properly diagnosed if diagnosed at all that Oh well, these people have these problems, so we're we're gonna say video games is the problem. No, I already had exam. Uh, I had. I'm, I'm speaking for somebody. I'm not speaking about me. I had insomnia before I was playing video games. You know what I mean? Cause guess what? It causes insomnia. It's not just video games. It's looking at a computer screen twelve hours a day when you have to go to work. Uh, you know, a lot of other things cause um. Insomnia is called purple UAV or something like that. Something like that, you know. A lot of those things cause insomnia. So you could never play a video game in light your life, but stare at a video, uh, a computer screen, or now a TV screen because now the, the practically TV screens are computer screens now. And yeah. You'd be looking at that. You begin the same uh, UV problem, and guess what? You got insomnia. Oh, mm-hmm. because here, here. Here's what the UV does to your brain. The purple UV light does to your brain. It automatically, like when you're when you're looking at that in the dark, or you look at that at long periods of time, the purple UV light that you don't see as a color, but look it up on the internet. Um, that you don't actually see as a color, but the the beam that 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 gets, you know, emitted to our eyes, it confuses our brain and makes it think that it's daytime. That's why if you've ever looked at your phone, like in the middle of the night and you stared at it for a while, you feel wide awake because it's hard for you to sleep. That's because it's the UV tricking your brain, making it think that it's daylight. I'm telling you, I've done some research chat. And so, and that's why I tell my wife, she's like, she's like, cause my wife, she always looks at Facebook right before she goes to sleep. And she's like, babe, I'm having a hard time sleeping. And it's like, because you looked at your, you looked at your phone, like the UAV light, you know? So mm-hmm. like, you know, and they want to put it on video games, but it's really the technology that what we're using now. You know what I'm saying? Video game is just a scapegoat right now. Right. And you mentioned something very, very important because this is what you just mentioned earlier is one of the biggest arguments that a lot of video game trade bodies have, such as ESA, UKIE, and ISFE. And don't ask me what those stand for because I don't know. But the biggest thing that they argue is that the fact that this classification is so blunt of a tool that it risks misdiagnosing patients. Yeah. So the patients who have more serious problems Mm -hmm. are not going to get addressed because they're just Mm going to blame it on video games. And then it gets worse when they stop playing or whatever the case may be. So yeah, misdiagnosing is a big, big problem. And and this is going to make it worse. and, 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 you know, and, and here, and here's my biggest worry, you know, not that not that I don't think people that are disabled shouldn't get the money, you know, that they need. But you're going to have a lot of people that are going to be filing for disability because of this disorder. Oh, yeah. People are going to take advantage of this. Yeah, and it's going to suck. In two different ways. It's going to be, one, people to self-medicate. Yep. It, it gives them an excuse now, so you're enabling. Yep. And two... People are going to make money off of this because now someone's going to say, well, I'm a video game counselor because of this. And they're going to make money off of scamming people. Yeah. Or you have people say they're going to just scapegoat be like, oh, I don't have depression. I'm a video game addict. Oh, I don't have. Right. I don't have suicidal thoughts. I'm a video game addict. Oh, I don't have PTSD. I'm a video game addict. Oh, 
I don't have, uh, you know, a serious mental health problem. I'm a video game addict. Cause I, I God help me. Video game disorder is not a ser- is not a mental health issue. I no, I refuse to say. And you can for those that if you are listening to this, so you can sit there and say I'm in denial all you want. But I promise you. From somebody that has seen somebody, that has lived with somebody with mental health issues. Like, you don't, you don't know mental health issues, man. Like, that video gaming is not a mental health issue. Uh, If anything, it's been, uh, it was a, it was a help, you know, for a lot of people. You know, uh, I'm not going to put people on blast, but I have literally seen people that have had, social anxiety after playing video games like after they've after they've had social anxiety they start playing video games and they're actually social they can actually go out they can actually enjoy the world you know they can actually you know there's some people that I know that were like afraid to go outside of their house but then once they started playing video games and started communicating with people they 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 found you know uh, the courage to to go outside and not feel like they're gonna die, you know what I mean? Those are you know those are like serious attacks on the mind. Now, you know, I could go deeper, you know, but I'm not gonna go deeper. That that's like in the spiritual realm. Like that's not that's not for this place. But, um, you know, there 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 you have to understand that people are just trying to find a way to stop uh, gaming the way that it's taking off and blowing up because you want to know why? It's the same reason why marijuana is illegal. It's because they don't know how to to really make money off of it. Did you, did you, did you see what uh, pr- the president's trying to do? No. He's basically trying to put another tax on gaming. Uh, so basically like, um, when you buy a game or I don't know if it's going to go into content creation, but basically we're going to have to pay an extra tax when it comes to gaming. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that, you know, that it goes, you know, the higher ups, whatever you want to call it or whatever, they're mad because you got people like Ninja and 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 you know all these other people making two million dollars, you know three million dollars, in like weeks, right? And they're like, man, well, how can we get that? How or and if we can't get that, how can we stop that? Because I guarantee you, if it goes, if it goes to the way that it goes, and it fully becomes a thing, and nobody disputes this. There's going to be a lot of changing when it comes to content creation. There's going to be a lot of changes when it comes to streaming because um, because it's going to be, quote, unquote, a mental illness now. So, you know what I mean? They'll be like, oh, the person that's streaming 24 hours, he's got a mental illness. He's got a gaming disorder. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but these are the things that... Like they're already picking up things that are like far fetched and like non believable, you know. So you know, like, what's what's to stop them now? They could put they could put restrictions on you streaming. They could put on restrictions on how you stream. They can put on restrictions on what you stream, and it couldn't even be, it can you know possibly it can't possibly you know it could not even be on Twitch's side. It could be the government. The government could come down on Twitch and be like, you can't promote this kind of activity. There's a lot of scary things, chat. A lot of scary things. Yeah. You know? I can't comment too much on the whole tax thing because that may or may not be related. And I don't know what the tax is going to do because the tax could actually benefit depending on what the tax is for. So that's why I really don't want to comment because I don't know enough about it to say anything. Right, right. But, right. Um, but as far as like, you know, the whole disorder thing, like, 
it's just another one of those attempts to instead of just owning up to your problems, you're finding a scapegoat to it instead. Right. So you're ignoring your own legitimate serious issue for something else that's easy to blame. You know, right. and that's the problem that I have with that. That's like saying, oh, I, you know, <laughs> I have anxiety because of my daddy issues. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I don't really have a problem. I just have daddy issues. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's trying to, it's like what we always tell my daughter when she tries to blame somebody else for the reason why she got in trouble instead of owning up for the reason why you in trouble or owning up for the reason why you have the issues that you have you want to blame it on something else yep we, we, we live in a world of excuses unfortunately we got to blame others instead of taking responsibility oh it's 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 this person why i'm not partnered no you want to know whose reasons why i'm not partnered is because of me <laughs> it's because of me i haven't you know yeah, I grind, but I, I'm just using me as an example, you know what I mean? Because that's where streamers streamers get, you know, streamers are like, well, this is the reason why I'm not partnered. It's because it's oversaturated. It's because of this. It's because of that. No, it's not because of that. It's just because you haven't put in the time and the, the focus enough to, let me, 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 let me say, let me say, I'm not saying stream 24 hours a day. I'm not streaming say, 30 hours a day you haven't figured out what how to separate yourself from everybody else you want to be a part of the pact instead of being being somebody else you know what i'm saying um it, it, that's what i'm saying you to 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 make it to make it in streaming nowadays you got to be willing to set yourself apart you got to be willing to set yourself apart and and i'm speaking to myself when i say this i have not yet set myself apart from everybody else and so, you know, like, once you realize that, that it's not, it's not always somebody, it's not somebody else's fault. Like, you got to take responsibility for your actions and what you do and how you do things and how you could maybe possibly, but you got to be able, you got to be willing to, to self-reflect on yourself and self-criticize yourself. But not to the point where you beat yourself up, but you could be like, okay, the reason why I have this problem is because uh, blah, 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 blah. The reason why I haven't done this because of blah, 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 blah. The reason why I haven't done YouTube videos is because I, I have a serious problem with procrastination. The reason why I haven't, you know, done uh, this job or whatever because, because, okay, now that I have addressed that issue, how can I make it better? What can I do to better myself? You know what I'm saying? What can I do? But we don't think like that no more. It's like, well, the reason why I don't do YouTube because YouTube is broken. Well, the reason why I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't finish the work that I need to do it is because I don't have, I, the, the, they don't want to give me the proper resources. Well, the reason why I don't, you know, do this is because I, the reason why I don't stream is because I need this, I need that. Even though I have a perfect Xbox and a per or a perfect PS4, I, I I need I need the computer. I need graphics. I need this. I need that. No, all you need to do is just get up and do it. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, get up and do and and quit blaming other people or, or the situation that you're in on why you're not where you're at. You know, <clears throat> it's, it's it's crazy. I can go real deep on that subject, but because a lot of people would rather blame somebody else or blame the situation they're in and why they're not in have you ever realized that maybe the the reason why you're in the situation that you're in is so you can reach other people that are in the same situation that you're in to help them you know what i mean have you ever have you ever like really thought about that you know chat have you ever thought about maybe that's the reason why you're in the situation that you're in is not to sit and complain about the situation that you're in or not to mope about the situation that you're in but to help somebody else because guess what, you can only help you can only help people that in a situation that you've been through. You know what I'm saying? A rich man, a rich, a rich man can't go into a poverty that's never uh, can't go into a poverty neighborhood that's never he that he's never been a poverty and tell people how to be rich. He just can't. He just can't. Only a man that was only a rich man that grew up from poverty can tell a, a person in poverty how to be rich. And and you know. And that's probably a bad analogy, but that's just saying, like, 
you can only help people or people can only get help from people that actually been through the same thing that you've been through. <clears throat> so stop complaining. And honestly, a perfect example of that is uh, someone that I used to listen to a lot named Dave Ramsey. Oh, yeah. uh, he's someone that lost everything at one time, started over. He recognized that he made mistakes, started over. And now not only does he have, he makes a lot of money. He has a ministry and he has a whole business of getting people out of debt because he's been there. Right. It's not like he just found a money making scheme. He experienced it. And that's why he's su such a big deal in that community because people can relate because he understands. There's one thing to say that you sympathize with someone's situation, but you know nothing about a situation until you've actually been through it. Right, exactly. Exactly. Just because you heard someone talk about it doesn't make you an expert. Right. But if you go through it, that means you got something. You, you got know you got experience. Got you. you know. Yeah. Be <laughs> Let me, let, let me let, I'm about to blow you off my mind. We, we, we're kind of going a different direction, but somebody need, need to hear this. <clears throat> Ex expert in something does not mean a piece of paper. Expert in something means something, somebody that's got experience. I could have an, 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 a degree, a degree in, I don't know, let's say I have a degree in, in rocket science, but if I've never... If I've never experienced it, then am I really a master? No, because guess what? You're going to put me in that situation, and I am not going to know a flip what I'm doing. But guess what? You are a master. <laughs> this is sound weird. What you experience, you are a master in. You know. So you have that experience. Now, what you choose to do with that experience, that's on you. You could choose to go the positive route. And help somebody or you could choose to be like well you know what this is my life blah you know what i'm saying and unfortunately guess what that this is my life blah is so much easier and this is and why am i going this route is because this is how this whole gaming disorder thing started is because too many people are like this is my life, blah, and started and, and stopped. And instead of saying, you know what? No, this is how I can help people. This is the whole reason why I stream is to be like, look, this is my life. It's not blah. It's amazing. Yeah, guess what? I can't walk. But guess what? It's not video games fault. I can't walk. It's not. <laughs> I, I, I can see the commercials now. Yes. My name is John Smith, and I have cerebral palsy because of oh, me constantly falling in the hole playing Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Because my feet hit the spikes, I am no longer able to move my legs anymore. <laughs> that's it, it, You might think, oh, that's just unrealistic, but that's the kind of stuff that really happens. Yeah. To, you know what I mean? It's, like, it's, it's because uh, of it's No, you know, you, you know what? I already know this was going to come to me in a DM or somewhere. Or somewhere, or something. I already know. I can feel it in the spirit. Somebody's gonna be like, "Well, the reason why you're not walking is because you spend too much time playing video games, and not trying to get up and walk." I could feel it. You want to know why, chat? Because I've been there before, chat. I'm not, 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 not in that, not in that, not in that phrasing not that specifically but, but he had he's had a similar experience yeah, yeah i've had that people. yeah i've had similar situations like that where people be like well this is the reason why you're not walking <laughs> and this yeah, is the, yeah. and it's because you da, 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 da. i'm not gonna go into it because it would you know but yeah that's another story uh, but yeah <laughs> that's another story for another day um but i can already feel it once this drops people's like yeah your video game disorder is because it, you have a video game disorder and this is why you're not walking. Because you could be focusing on doing this and instead of playing video games and streaming. I could feel it. Yeah. I could feel it. You know, I actually heard something funny one time. Um, and <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the source online because I don't want to make it sound as bad as it is. But somebody basically was talking about how they're on a first class plane 
right? No, they were, they were sitting first class on the plane. And they were sitting next to this person who was very nice dressed. You could tell it was a very successful business person, you know. But he was complaining that he spent the entire time playing video game and, quote, stated, you know, he could be doing something else, like, I don't know, drinking or something. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> like, drinking oh. because drinking is so much better. <laughs> yeah, let me just get drunk and then get off a plane and do whatever I'm going to do as opposed to just, you know, just occupying my time, minding my business, enjoying myself. Because I just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. Because it's video games' <laughs> fault I didn't get to enjoy my first-class experience. Mm-hmm. And just like people want to blame video games for it's your choice. You choose to play the video game or not. <laughs> yeah. Just some funny stuff. Oh. But for those people who do, you know, I, I do want to at least add some positivity mm. now that we've been kind of on this negative rabbit hole. I'm going to go ahead and just plug uh, a gaming community who actually does do something for mental illness. And I'm not talking about games done quick, believe it or not, but it's very similar. Nice. Um, just about a month or two ago, they just had a RPG limit break, which is basically speed running RPGs for oh, a week, yeah. just like games done quick does, but it's for RPGs. And they specifically raised money for NAMI, which is a National Alliance of Mental Illness. Um, so you know, that's gamers getting together to promote something that does something legitimate, <laughs> you know, to cure legitimate problems. Um, so, you know, I kind of wanted to plug that because it kind of goes hand in hand. I don't always talk about it because I don't always participate Mm -hmm. because I never know when they're going to (laughs) start. So, um, but I I wanted to give that positive plug though while we're on that similar topic. And unfortunately I'm not going to piggyback back off that, but I'm going to say this. When that DM comes, I'm going to share it with (laughs) y'all. I'm going to share it with y'all. I'll bless you. So he's warning you now if you DM... If, if if you guys DM him about this, just know he's gonna put put that conversation on blast. I am, I am. I'll blurt out the name, whatever, whatever I need to do. But I'm gonna show it because I already know it's coming. It's probably gonna come from a family member. I already know. Oh. <clears throat> you know. Um. But you know, and and <laughs> it's crazy. You know, you realize that's gonna be like. That's even going to be, like, submissible in court as far as, like, divorces go. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my I've God. I've actually heard stories. Bro. And it's I've gonna, heard stories. And now they're going to be able to put, like, <laughs> well, my spouse has video game disorder. He can't, mm-hmm. They can't be a functional spouse. It's... Lord Jesus, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that this gets overturned because this is going to be a mess. Cause it's gonna get appealed. Somebody better appeal it. I wish I had the the knowledge to appeal it. Like as far as um, what you call it, legal stuff. But that's not in my expertise. Yeah. Is that in my? It's ex- gonna be a situation where you're gonna go to court and you're gonna get away with something because you're gonna claim a mental issue because of video games. Well, because he played a lot of Grand Theft Auto. Um, it's okay that he murdered. We're not gonna, you know, send him to prison. We're just gonna send him to an institution because he played video games. And we'll, you'll just be able to play video games for, you know, like my. I'm curious to wonder, like, if this really like goes through, like all the way, like you know, nobody appeals this. I'm curious to wonder, like, what the antidote's gonna be. Yeah, because they're talking about starting pushing policy in 2021, if I read it correctly, which I don't know what that means. I I mean, I guess they're not going to enforce it and let it be used until 2021. It's just something that just got passed recently. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a sad thing. All I know is if I if I get limited on my gaming because of this, I'm gonna be mad. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? Like, they'd be like, oh, you can only stream, like, or you can only game, like, two hours a day or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, I game, like, when nobody's at home or when I'm, like, for instance, you know, like, this has become, you know, it's my therapy, man. And I don't mean mental therapy, Mm -hmm. physical therapy with my hands. Um, this is why I feel like I'd be a good ac- uh, activist on advocate. advocate, yeah, 
on like appealing this because I have like proof that gaming was a physical therapy for me. Like I have proof. I have all the proof. You know what I mean? So it's like, hello, McFly. But we'll see what happens. Maybe God will put me in that situation. Maybe he won't. Hopefully he does. That would be really cool. Yep. But um, is there anything else you have? As I'm sitting um, here messing with my mic. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll bring out one other thing to kind of get off this. I know this is really deep for y'all, so I'll, I'll kind of lighten the mood a little bit. Uh, something that I thought was kind of interesting, because I did kind of mention something similar to this. Um, Activision gave us Call of Duty Mobile, specifically, the Battle Royale treatment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, you'll have 100 rival combatants uh, parachute into the battlefield. Um, and then, of course, uh, Call of Duty veteran characters um, will be available to play as. You know, so that's kind of cool. You know, um, basically, players can contend in single, two person, four person squad battles. Uh, six classes will be accessible from the start, each coming with their own abilities and skills. So, yeah, how do you feel about uh, Call of Duty Mobile going in the uh, Battle Royale? I think it's horrible. Uh, situation? I think it's horrible. Really? I don't. I and don't. Why is that? Because, because. Here's the thing. Okay. <sighs> to play those games, you need a controller. Okay. And especially for somebody with, you know, the disability. And the problem with that is when you have those games on a phone and you need a controller, nine times out of ten, they consider that cheating, so you get banned. Right now, if you caught using a controller on PUBG Mobile, your your account is banned. You're not allowed to use a controller. So, um, yeah, and considering that like Call of Duty is bigger than PUBG, and it's like a controller based game, like I just don't understand. I don't understand why. I don't get why. I don't see the reason for Call of Duty's never done well in mobile. Right? Like this is the first time they've like really done the mobile experience right, I guess. Or they've actually fully ported a mobile or a Call of Duty game into mobile. But giving Call of Duty's track record in the mobile space, all their mobile games is tanked. And you already do you already known like bad about your monet uh your monetization when it comes to loot boxes and stuff like that. So you're already messed up and you are already late to the whole to me I feel like it's too late for Call of Duty. I feel like they needed to do this a long time ago as far as the mobile scene goes. I don't know. And because they're already like look bad for their monetization, so even if they go and do the monetization in 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 the mobile space, I don't think I don't think people are gonna invest in it like they would in, in like or they have in the in the other mobile uh, battle royals. I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I mean, I'm not really a big battle royale person, so. Um... I only, I, I mean, maybe it is too late. I mean, that is a good point. But I like the fact that they are expanding because there are some people who do enjoy playing these type of games on mobile. Um, so, I mean, I'm personally okay with them trying. I'm going to try it. Regardless of what. I'm going to try it. It's free. You don't have to. That's another thing, too. It's going to be free to play. So, yeah, it, it goes back to originally what I said. Next year or, you know... Blackout's going to become free to play. You can't tell me that you're going to have me pay 60 bucks for a Blackout on console, but I can play the the the, the mobile version of Blackout for free. And on that note, i got to use the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and I'll kind of explain the difference. because It's not going to be exactly like Black uh, Blackout, 
So I'll actually just read this to you. I'll just, you can kind of see what it's saying. So I'm reading this specifically. Rules will be similar to Black Ops 4's Blackout Mode. However, the developer has stated that the mobile Battle Royale will be standalone from previous versions. The game can be played in either first or third person perspective. So you get that choice. Um, I actually kind of like third person myself. The new map will take inspiration from numerous Call of Duty titles, including Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2. Uh, and then it says that uh, the Call of Duty Mobile developed in partnership with Tencent and built on the Unity game engine is expected to release later this year. Uh, so <clears throat> it's supposed to be different. I don't know exactly how different it's going to be because, again, I don't really play Battle Royale games in general. But, um, but yes, uh, I think it's okay for them to at least give it a shot uh, doing something. Now, as far as comparing, you know, would, would you want to pay 60 bucks to play it on console or would you want to play it on mobile for free? Well, I will tell you that I see nothing wrong with you wanting to pay 60 bucks to play it on console because, you know, a lot of us, especially those of us who are a little more old school, sometimes prefer to play, you know, on console with a controller. That's what we're used to. And you do get a better experience with games when you're playing on console or PC rather than mobile, um, whether it be graphically, um, whether it be just controls, you know what I mean? Uh, so I don't want to discourage people who, let's say they don't have uh, Black Ops 4, for example. I don't want to necessarily discourage you from paying, you know, however much Black Ops was cost right now to do that and, and just do mobile instead. I still think it's worth paying the 60 bucks for um, Call of Duty just because on console just because you will be getting a better experience this is just more for people who have a preference for mobile that's all this is so you don't have to jump on the bandwagon for it this is strictly for people who just prefer mobile if if you have if you have a console you're more of a console player or a pc player whatever the case may be stick with that you don't have to jump on the mobile bandwagon just because it's going to be no you don't have to um, you know, so you already got Call of Duty, you're solid. Just keep on doing what you're doing. But yeah, more than likely it will be free to play as far as the mobile is concerned. Um, but don't expect it to be exactly what it is on console or in any other systems. You know what I mean? Just just know that the mobile experience is always gonna be limited somewhere. And and the article doesn't really give any specifics as far as like, you know, how it's going to necessarily look or what you're going to be getting in comparison to the console. But I can tell you from experience, when you're playing games that are console slash mobile, that you you usually get a better experience on console. With the exception of play PUBG, because I'm hearing people tell me that mo uh, sometimes mobile is better for them. But I think that's more because of the uh, connectivity issues, not because of the game itself. So I think that's a different factor altogether. But uh, but I would just say if you got a console, just stick to console. That that's really what I'm saying for the most part. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait for your boy Handy to come back here. All right, I'm back. Hold on. Oh, uh, you're good, man. <clears throat> and I was only just kind of explaining to everybody the the differences to some degree. But that basically, if you have Call of Duty on console, you can still stick to console and get a better experience. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, <clears throat> and I was sitting on the toilet and it reminded me there is a phone out there. Let me see if I can look it up while um, we're talking. I was watching a YouTube video on it. Somebody was uh, <clears throat> um, doing a review on it. The phone actually has the L and the R buttons built in. But they're actually not like buttons. They're not physical buttons. They're more like sensors. Let me see if I can. <clears throat> I'll put the phone in chat. In the Twitch chat. Uh, when I when I saw this, I thought of you, right? For this video, mm -hmm. because um, I think it'd be great for you. Um, I mean, but like I said, I don't see people. 
<coughs> buying a whole new phone just to experience this game. You know what I mean? I feel like for that to happen, for people to take that seriously, there needs to be a, an actual, like, an exclusive uh, IP that um, that actually, you know, is like a really good battle royale or shooter game that can only be played on your phone. That hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> you know? So just like a unique battle royale for mobile only? Yeah, for mobile only. To make people like really want to play their mobile devices. I think for that to happen... I, I think that's what needs to happen. You know what I mean? For 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 people to really take mobile gaming seriously as far as like what they're trying to do because like I said, okay, so the phone is called Red Magic 3. And basically, I'm going to put the video I'm going to put the video in the Discord too so you can check it out. Um Yeah. Um basically this phone you can it has the you know the the aim down sight button and the shooter button, the L and the R, they're actually built into the phone. And it's like a, it's actually got a CPU fan. It's got all these cool stuff. Uh, it's specifically for gaming. Um, it's really cool. But again, that goes back to what I said that I don't see people going out buying this phone just to play PUBG. I don't see people going out buying this phone to play Fortnite. I don't see people going out buying this phone to play uh, Call of Duty, you know, mobile. Unless that's the only system they have. Now, if that's the only system they have, then of course. But, you know, I don't see majority of people, like, making the switch over. And I feel like for, for gaming to be taken seriously in the first-person shooter realm, they need to make an IP that's exclusively and is good as a triple A uh, first person shooter that is actually before you continue I do have to mention something that you actually missed when you went to the bathroom. Oh. Um this particular call or uh yeah Call of Duty mobile for uh for for Battle Royale, you're gonna be able to pick from first or third person. Interesting. So you're not exclusively having to do that. That was one of the differences that uh, I was mentioning huh. um, while you were on the toilet. Uh, huh. So you will be actually able to choose which mode. But I do like your point because instead of just having mobile rehashes of of games that are on console or PC, well, I'll just say console because most mobile games are played on PC too. So I'll just say instead of doing rehashes of console games on mobile, they should make unique games that are within the genre that are mobile exclusive. I do like that idea a lot better. Right. Because, because, it, because why, why downgrade from console to mobile if you don't have to? Right. Exactly. That's, that's the whole thing. And why, why, why downgrade in general? Like, I don't know. Just... Yeah. Why downgrade in general? Oh. And I'm not saying that mobile is bad. I mean, obviously I'm a mobile gaming advocate, but, you know, if I had the choice, and because there are games that I own that I could play on mobile. Like, for example, Final Fantasy Tactics. I have mm. it for my PlayStation. Um, but why would I want to play it on my phone when I could just play it on my TV with my controller and everything and be more, more comfortable? Right, right, you know? right, right, right. Like, you yeah. know, um, if, if mobile was my preference, I guess that would be one thing, but... But I mean, I, I would just rather play the console version. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't. And and to be honest, it makes mobile look bad because it's like, oh, well, we get a down another mobile rehash. Another mobile rehash because mobile's not taken seriously, you know. Yeah. And it sucks. Like, if you okay, if you believe in mobile so much. Treyarch or whoever makes these whoever makes the rehash of these games why not make an exclusive game for mobile and maybe and yeah. maybe 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 it's not and maybe that's what it is maybe the developers just don't take mobile seriously that could be it too and if that's the case they should right you know what i mean you know. everything does not need to be a rehash mobile can be creative there's so much that I've seen as far as mobile RPGs 
that are completely different from your traditional RPGs. Why can't you do that for your, you know, shooters, you know, battle royales, whatever others are you're doing? Why can't you be creative there? It's funny. It's like they take it serious enough because they know it's a money grab, but they don't take it serious enough as a product. You know what I'm to saying? Put, to put actual effort into put it. Put actual effort into it. And be more creative. It's kind of like yeah. how music is nowadays. It's like music's not really creative yeah. anymore. Yeah. Oh, we'll just go, we'll just go, we'll just make a trap beat with some auto tunes because that's just what everybody eats up. They don't even care what you say anymore just to make that money. But like, I, you know. As far as like me putting effort and and passion into it, nah, I'm good. Let's just make a let's make music about bubble gum. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and then when that bubble gums go, when that bubble gum goes flat, we'll just make we'll give them another piece, give them another piece, give them another piece, give them another piece. It's the same, and it's like it sucks, dude, because like. Unless you're informative, like how we are, you know, or understand how we are, then then if the developers don't take mobile gaming seriously, then the consumers are definitely not going to take mobile gaming seriously. Yeah. You know? And, and for those that are worried about, well, you know, it would be easier to advertise because we're slapping a AAA title on the name of the game. Mobile gamers don't care. Yeah. They don't care that it's coming from a AAA title. You know, it could be any title you want. If the game is good, the game is good. good. Like, mobile gamers, we seek new games all the time. We're not looking for the next Call of Duty, the next Octopath Traveler. And I'm going to say Octopath because I was hyped to see that they were making one. But at the same time, it's like you could make any um, RPG similar to that game with a different title. It would still be good. Oh, so they're they're making a mobile version of that too? Well, not the actual game itself. I mean, they're going to make a completely different game altogether oh, but it still has the octopath traveler name on it oh that sucks and, that, and that's what i'm saying like you know yeah it's cool they're making a mobile version but you could also just make a standalone game nintendo and you know you're not forced to slap the octopath name on it but you know, um, then that, you know but, I mean. that, that, but see the problem is with that og that that takes actual work and nobody actually wants to work anymore Everybody wants that easy yeah. route. Everybody wants that handout, you know? Um, right. You know? And the reason, now, there are, you could argue, okay, well, if, you know, let's say you you're, you don't like the fact that they did it to Octopath, but why Fire Emblem Heroes? Here's the difference. So Fire Emblem Hero is a mobile collector that you're collecting characters from multiple Fire Emblem game. So it's not like a specific Fire Emblem game that's being rehashed on mobile. Right. This is a Fire Emblem game where you can collect characters from multiple Fire Emblem games to put them all in one game. You're not playing so, the same exact game over just in you're not, Yeah, exactly. You're not playing the exact same game. You're playing its own game, even though it has a title, but you're able to use all the characters, or at least the, as they release them, you know, because when, there are some some characters on uh, them, but, but you see the difference. When does this game come out? Because I'll probably do a review on this game. Are you talking about the Octopath one? No. Or are we talking about no, the Call of Duty one? Yeah, the Call of Duty one. Uh, let me look again. I've, I may have said it, but I don't remember. Let I've me seen see. reviews on it already, but I don't. I haven't watched them because I don't want to develop somebody else's opinion. Yeah, let me see. My own opinion. Oh, here we go. It's expected to release later this year, it says. Oh, that means they don't know. Well, it could be any time this year. Right, yeah, exactly. But... They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> that, yeah. Unfortunate. Uh, I probably do a review on that game because I know you probably won't play that game at all. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna play it. No. Yeah, I already know you're not. <clears throat> but yeah, I will play Octopath on mobile just to kind of probably review it more for science than anything else. But the, we were just kind of discussing, you know, the whole rehashing of mobile games or console games on mobile. Yeah, definitely. It. it <sighs> and my can and, and then if you really want here's the thing if you really want to make an impact call of duty mobile wise why didn't you do it on the switch yeah because the switch is the perfect <laughs> hybrid as far as console and mobile it would have been perfect i swear I, I i'm in the wrong i'm in the wrong like 
I, I'm in the wrong like uh, position. I need to be like in in sales or something because like to me that's the win win. Okay, because Fortnite doesn't do well on on Switch because of the whole building and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, what up? Okay. What up? What up, mobile? What? No, what up, man? Uh, we talking about um, we're talking about the new call. The there's a Call of Duty, basically Call of Duty Blackout's coming to mobile, pretty much. And but it's coming to your phone. And OG. and it's not title blackout, but basically, you know, yeah, they're, they're they're the the Call of Duty that's already on mobile is adding a battle royale right. version. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. And I'm and so and OG was asking the the question, the anticipatable question. What are my thoughts on it? And I, you know, as much as I like Call of Duty, it's a bad idea. And I was basically saying to to me cuz I know they're trying to make money I know they're trying to make that mobile money but why not why not if they were going to make it mobile and I, I said a bunch of other stuff but you don't have to go back and listen to it but um what you came in on me saying was why didn't they put it on the switch it would have been it would have been better for it would have been better for the consumer and they still would have made that money, like for for the they still would have made that mobile money, you know what I mean? Because they could have slapped their microtransactions, whatever they're gonna do, however they're gonna do it. Um, I just don't understand, you know what I mean? Uh, cause to me Fortnite, you know, I don't know, I haven't played Fortnite on on the Switch, but to me Fortnite has not done well on the Switch, from from what from what I understand. From what I understand, I haven't played it because I don't want to play it because I I don't want to, I don't want to cross paths. I want to keep my Switch a straight Nintendo Switch experience. I will only play games that are made for the Nintendo Switch. I will not play. Uh, I will only play. Let me put it this way: I will only play Nintendo ports. I am not gonna play PlayStation ports. I'm not gonna play Xbox ports. I'm not gonna play anything like that because I already have a PlayStation. So why I already have an Xbox. So why am I going to play something that I can play on those? Uh, yeah, business is a cold world. I mean, yeah, we were just talking about that, you know, with the whole optic situation, the optic and and you know, uh, optic J situation, the whole phase and and and. Tifu situation, Nay shot and Nip Mercs. When 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 you know when business is a cold world, man. Definitely a cold world. And what else you say? He said, being account uh student of business. I see the num the numbers games being played here today. They looking at around sales. Of the Switch and mobile users, and mobile users are way more than Switch. Well, yeah, because here's the thing, right? Everybody has a phone. Everybody has a phone. Not everybody. Because they have to. Right. To be more specific, everybody has a phone because they need a mode of communication. And since gaming is packaged into it, you don't have to buy anything extra, whereas any kind of a console, that's a separate thing that's not a necessity, so you would have to throw a lot more money at the screen to experience this. So, right. of course, mobile's going to make more, because right. you're not buying, you're not spending $100 on hardware. You can't lease, you can't lease a console, you know, through, like, I mean, you can, but, like, not everywhere can you lease a console, you know what I'm saying? It's so much easier to get a phone leased, you know what I'm saying? Uh, anybody and everybody can get a phone. I mean, shoot, you can even get a free phone through the government, you know, now. So, which is crazy. Although I wouldn't recommend playing 
mobile games on government phones. No, but, I don't even yeah. think they're that. I don't even think you can play government. I don't even think you can play games on the. Well, government. you can play like solitaire and stuff like oh, that. That's a joke. But you're not going to be able to play your average mobile game that's like an RPG or something. Right, like that. right, it's, right. It's just not going to be. Right. It's not going to work. Right, but that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm just talking about how more accessible. Yeah, the phone right. is. You know, it's easy. Anybody can get a phone. You know what I mean? I mean, you know. So, and, you know, and the crazy thing is, like I said earlier, they're making the Call of Duty games going to be free. So, which, I mean, it's smart. But I just don't think it's going to be great. I don't think the game, I think it's going to hurt Call of Duty more than help Call of Duty, um, personally. Uh, you know what I mean? I think, you know, I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm going to try it. Uh, I'll probably make a video on it and uh, see how it goes. I probably won't stream it um, because, as it is, I already have when I when I when I screen share my phone, I already have input lag as it is. When I look at it on the TV screen, so um, yeah, so I'm probably not gonna stream it. It's just going to be for science and, and reviewing purposes only. Um, but, man, that's crazy, though. What a what a mm. deep day today was. Today was pretty deep. Uh, yeah, it was. I, I'll say 122 went deep today. Went deep, deep, yep. deep. 122 went deep. <laughs> 122 went deep. But um, I'm I'm good as far as subjects. Uh, I'm pretty sure you want to Yeah, I think it. we're good. I, I think we've gotten deep enough to where – uh, y'all can kind of just kind of digest what we discuss, yeah, and well, really think about things, and then continue gaming. Yeah, continue <laughs> gaming, and remember, don't allow, don't allow money become between good friendships, man. Don't, don't, yeah, please, yeah, especially if you're if you're talking about going into business. I personally think it's a bad idea to go into business with friends, but you know, but if you're going to do it, if you're not going to take our advice and, and not do it, be very careful. Please. Yeah. Please Just be very careful. Cause like I said, you know, it can ruin friendships. Please. And that's why I was saying earlier that whenever I open my own business, it's going to be just me running it with employees and people to help me and all <sighs> that. But I'm going to be the main, main, you know, head person. He'll so, just, he'll just cool. sell handy kill cam merchandise there. That's all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, there is something I want to talk to you about privately um, that I'm not going to say on air regarding my, some of my business ideas that you might appreciate. So oh, okay. we, we may talk about this on another day if, if it actually comes up. Okay, but, uh, definitely, definitely. But yeah, just be careful, everyone. Just okay. be careful. Yeah, just be careful. Please be advised. Public service. But Go ahead. With that being said, with that being said, said, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you for watching. And listening to the OG podcast, we are broadcasted live every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Central on Twitch TV and the Kill Camps channel. But we do appreciate those of you who do listen to us on other platforms. Mm -hmm. I know SoundCloud's been a huge, yep. huge support. So thank you, SoundCloud viewers, for, you know, taking the time out of your day to listen to us, even if it's just on the background. The fact that we're in your background still means a lot. That means that you could be listening to something else right now and you decide to listen to us. Yeah. So we want you to know that we appreciate that. Definitely. So thank you very much on all other platforms that you guys listen to us on and of course we'll be back again next week to talk about more gaming related stuff we hope you guys take care keep gaming and tomorrow andy kill cam will yep. be at able gamer yes Fortnite. and i just want to share something like i want to add what he said right there because the amazing thing is like we're getting so much exposure on soundcloud and i don't put no tags or nothing because the reason why I don't put no tags on it is because it's, you know, mainly music tags. And even though there's a lot of po podcasts on SoundCloud, like I ne I necessarily don't understand what they use for tags. So I just leave it blank and I just put episode blah, 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 and it gets exposure. So really the fact that you guys choose to listen to us out of everybody, like it's crazy, man. And I just want to say thanks. Much appreciated. Um, but other than that, we out. Later. Later, y'all.